January, North Dakota State got some redemption, knocking off James Madison for the program's sixth FCS national title. Cal Poly couldn't turn the page fast enough, finishing the season with just one victory. Today, the Mustangs roll into Fargo to take on the defending champs, and it's coming up next. FCS champions and their fan base are ready to open the 2018 season here at home. North Dakota State, number one in the country, taking on Cal Poly here this afternoon. Thanks so much for joining us here on the KVLY, KFYR, Bison Television Network. Ryan Sean and Lee Timmerman with you once again this season. And for North Dakota State, 20 seniors lost off in championship team that won in Frisco again in a very, very fun game against James Madison. But 25 more seniors this season, LT. Pretty peculiar to have a team that has that much depth after what they lost. And teams that have that much coming back are generally pretty good. We know the Bison are going to be a very good team this year. Part of that senior de uh, leads into some depth. The Bison have a couple of position groups, a uh, defensive line. There's going to be at least 10 defensive linemen that play today. The running backs group, especially when Seth Wilson comes back 100%, those will be some dynamic groups. The tight end group, we can go on and on, and we will throughout this uh, telecast, about how deep and how solid the Bison well, the fan base, as I mentioned, had a chance to savor 2017 raising the championship banner. Cal Poly could not turn the calendar fast enough. One of the worst records and worst seasons in Cal Poly history, just 1-10, worst season since 1964. They're probably excited just to get out here and play football and put 2017 out of their mind. They started doing that in the spring. Statistically, the worst season in Cal Poly history in over 50 years. They want to forget last year. Meanwhile, Easton Stick is maybe the player to watch this season in all of FCS LT. Should be fun to see how he performs. He is a senior. He'll be ready to go, and he will be good. Cal Poly has won the toss, and they have deferred. So North Dakota State will have the football first, and that is a look at Tim Walsh in his 10th season as head coach here at Cal Poly, a well-traveled coach, spent time in the Big Sky, 14 seasons at Portland State LT, where he ran the West Coast offense. <laughs> then he goes to Army, learns the triple option, comes back to Cal Poly, and inserts the triple option there. It's it worked was, out pretty well. It was kind of a trade. Cal Poly's head coach at the time went to Army, and then Walsh came back, and he did bring the option with him. I talked to a few people out West earlier this week and asked the question, why? the triple option and one of the main answers to that was well the best athletes out here the best wide receivers the best running backs they all play in the pack 10 we don't get them so we're going to find the best of the rest and try something different Walsh has done a good job there and the bison faithful started tailgating early this morning we're lining up last night a sold-out crowd here once again of over 18,000 strong ready to cheer on the defending FCS national champions 
getting ready to tee it up. Casey Cecil the senior of Manhattan Beach, California, will put the toe to it. And we are almost underway here at the Fargo Dome for the Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planting season with Peterson Farm Seed. Bruce Anderson deep, three yards deep will bring it out. Anderson electric with the ball in his hands, to the 20, steps out of a tangle, a tackle, and is eventually dragged out of bounds at about the 25-yard line. Pretty good return there for Anderson, taken down on the play by Aaron Cooper, backup linebacker out of Lancaster, California. And there's a look at Easton Stick. Boy, this guy has been tremendous in his career. 6,000 career passing yards, 2,000 career rushing yards. He graduated summa cum laude in three and a half years with his undergraduate degree and is currently working towards his Master's of Business Administration. Also spent the offseason at the Manning Passing Academy as a camp counselor. He will operate out of the shotgun here on first and ten. Play action. Boy, all day to throw. Now running out of time. Dropping it off to Lance Dunn, who dropped it in the flat. He was open, incomplete. Let's take a look at that North Dakota State offense. Lineup brought to you by Shields. Easton Stick, Omaha, Nebraska. Dylan Radins, Becker, Minnesota. Colin Connor, Mineral Point, Wisconsin. Tanner Volson, Belfort, North Dakota. Luke Bacon, Gamble, North Dakota. Zach Johnson, Blaine, Minnesota. Ben Ellipson, Holly, Minnesota. Brock Robbins, Cavalier, North Dakota. Lance Dunn, Waterloo, Iowa. Dallas Freeman, St. Michael, Minnesota. Darius Shepard, Blue Springs, Missouri. That's your starting lineup. Handoff to Dunn. Excuse me, Brooks is in at tailback. Makes the carry and is stacked up at the line of scrimmage. 4-0 gain and a third and long coming up here for the Bison. Let's take a look at the defensive unit for Cal Poly. Starting lineup also brought to you by Shields. Very inexperienced in the front seven LT. Three freshmen actually on the defensive line. And then Patrick Walker, Joey Ruiz, Jason Lee, and Nick Navarro, they had some experience, but again, not a lot of guys that have played a lot of football at Cal Poly. Yeah, that young interior will be tested. So far, they passed the test, forcing third and long. Dropped out in the flat. Anderson got a nice block, but could not step out of a tackle from Jason Lee. Gain of seven, three yards short of a first down will bring up a punting situation for the Bison. Jason Lee is able to trip up the running back in this case, even though he was a wide receiver. That'll be a little bit different look. Watch where uh, Anderson lines up this year. It'll be a few different uh, spots. This time he goes to whiteout. They run a little bubble with him. Lee with the trip up, and the Bison go three and out. Jason Lee third on the team in tackles for Cal Poly in 2017. He's one guy that has played quite a bit over his career. Garrett Wegner on for his first punt of the day. Nice high spiral deep. Driving the return man back to almost his own 10-yard line. And the Bison special teams coverage very good. A number of different players in there, including James Hendricks, the converted safety. Had a marvelous sophomore year, four interceptions, also placed in special teams as well. There's a look at Khalil Jenkins. As you mentioned in the pregame LT guy, that is pretty good running this option offense. Played in five games, then got hurt, missed the rest of the season. But he's a senior, he's experienced, and against Northern Iowa last year, threw four touchdown passes and for almost 250 yards. So he's capable of throwing the ball as well. He had 200 yards plus rushing against Idaho State in the game he got injured in last year. So, yes, he can get it done. Joe Pro throw. His first carry since last year, and it's almost been a year since he has played after getting injured against San Jose State. Let's take a look at the North Dakota State's defense. Lineup brought to you by Shields. Caleb Butler, Blaine, Minnesota. Blake Williams, Romeo, Michigan. Aaron Seidel, Carlos, Minnesota. Greg Menard, Lakeville, Minnesota. Levi Jordan, Dickinson, North Dakota. Dan Marlette, Sioux Falls, South Dakota. Jabril Cox, Kansas City, Missouri. Gino Nelson, Papillion, Nebraska. Rob Grimsley, Hutchinson, Minnesota. James Hendricks, Bemidji, Minnesota. Marquise Bridges, Minneapolis, Minnesota. Robbie Grimsley making the tackle on Jenkins, who gained about six. Third and approximately three here coming up for Cal Poly. And this is the situation they do want to get an LT with this offense. This is on schedule. And you're third and three or less. That's exactly where this offense wants to be. Not much room. Pro throw. Got a yard, and that is it. 
He is two yards short of a first down. And Greg Menard, good to see that young man back on the field. It has been 636 days since Greg Menard has played a snap. His last game was in the semifinals of 2016 against James Madison, injured an ACL early in fall camp last year, has worked hard to rehab, and now he's back here for his senior season. That year you were talking about, Menard was an All-American that year. He had sacks in 12 of the 14 games that he played in. He's a top 10 all-time sack man. 24 career coming into this year. It is great to see 96 back on the field. So bloody back to punt again. He handles the punting and kicking duties for Cal Poly. Robbie Grimsley deep. Calls for the fair catch at the 32 and makes it. And that's where North Dakota State will have it on their second possession. Both defenses holding. Three and out for each offense here to start. Look at Chris Kleiman in his fifth season. All he's done is win three national championships and get his team you to look, a semifinal. You look at some numbers and you and you go, okay, the Cal Poly team, Walsh's team lost 10 games last year. That's four more than Chris Kleiman has in his entire head coaching career at NDSU. <laughs> wow, huh? It's not bad. Well, the Bison are 64 and 6 here at the Fargo Dome since 2010. Not an easy place to win. Brock Robbins, Mosin just into the backfield. There's Anderson working off tackle, stepping out of a tackle and into a clear. He's got the safety to beat and finally pushed out of bounds by Kitu Humphrey inside Cal Poly territory at about the 44. First possession, the Bison tried a few different things, including the bubble screen. This time it's just to line it up, and we'll see if our guys in front are better than yours. A little power off a of power eye. Anderson able to bounce it outside, and then... The, the DB does a good job, and that is Humphrey of squeezing Anderson over to the sideline, but not before NDSU picks up its first, first down. 23 yards on that gain for Anderson. Stick to throw this time. Surveys and short hops. That went to Darius Shepard. Incomplete. Didn't appear to come out of his hand real clean. The nose of that ball was kind of down. It was a very deep in pattern. It's a, a shallow post, a skinny post along the hash that Shepard was running, and the stick was unable to get enough zip behind that one. Jarek Rosales in on that coverage for Cal Poly, another guy that missed all of last season, but did have 11 starts in 2016. Fifth on the team in tackles that stick year. Stick did get a nice shout out from Carson Wentz on Twitter about an hour before the game started. Those two still very close. Stick, quick drop, dumps it off to Ben Ellison. The junior from Hawley, Minnesota, is close to a first down. He's taken down at the 35-yard line, and Ellison has really had to elevate himself to be more of a threat. Just six catches a year ago, did have three touchdowns, but with the departure of Connor Wentz and Jeff Ilias, he will play a much prominent, more prominent role in the offense. Coach Messingham said that uh, Ben's the type of kid that is ready to take some ownership in that position and lead some of that position group. He's the best on the ball tight end, meaning blocking tight end that the Bison have. But we also saw from the numbers, Kev, or uh, you talked about Brian, that he can catch it. Done. Just following his offensive. Lyman steps out of a tackle. Lance Dunn. Touchdown, North Dakota State. Insurance Company replay. The beauty of this, Brian, I really like the patience. I think that Dunn showed right after he got the ball. His offensive line was in a zone blocking scheme. No pulling, straight up. Where's the hole going to be? Well, it's not there. He crashes in. Luke Bacon kind of gets a little bounce, squares his running back back up. Dunn has nothing in front of him but the end zone, and he finds it. Boy, did he score a bunch of touchdowns early last year. 12 touchdowns in the first five games before injuring a hip. That sideline him all the way till the national championship games against JMU. Cameron Peterson had the extra point. North Dakota State has a 7 0 lead, 9.57 to go on the Yank Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit GateCityBank.com slash MyCard. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC.
The lights have gone out in the Fargo Dome. We are not exactly sure why that has happened. <laughs> There was an issue earlier in the day where a similar situation occurred where the lights went out. So until we can get the lights on, we are just hanging out here in Fargo. Well, we have something new that we have an opportunity to, to, to play with, and we'll show it to you throughout the, the course of the game and as we get more familiar with it. North Dakota State, a 7-0 lead, 35-yard touchdown run by Lance Dunn. Nodak Insurance Company replay, and this is what I'm talking about, LT's toy. It's a telestrator, and we get to use it. Offensive line, there will be nobody pulling. This is a zone-blocking scheme. And then the man who scores the touchdown is able just to stay patient, stay patient, wait for something to open up. You'll see a great block here from Tanner Volson, the uh, the center. So watch Volson. It opens up on his backside. Touchdown after the over pursue. And we are being told we're on a five minute delay until we can get the situation figured out. And LT really enjoying his new toy. <laughs> so we will step aside as we get the lighting situation figured out here in the dome. And we'll be back with more Future's after this timeout. The future is so bright. This Bison <laughs> team, isn't it? That's the truth. Back in a moment. Time to pull out all stops. Welcome back to the dark Fargo Dome. They're trying to get the lights back on, and we have at least more light in the building than we did a moment ago. But obviously not enough to play. Not enough to play quite yet. Let's not forget North Dakota State and Cal Poly were conference foes for a period of time. During the transition, the initial transition to FCS, there was this thing called the Great West Conference that uh, involved these two conference teams. Who is number 40? Remember that guy? <laughs> I do. He's now on the Bison coaching staff. That's Tyler Roll. Well, North Dakota State was down. Late in the game, with under a minute to go, Steve Walker hit Cole Teckendorf for an 80-yard touchdown with 38 seconds left as North Dakota State went on to win in San Luis Obispo back in 2007, 31 to 28. And that is the last time these two teams played. North Dakota State leads the series four to three. But back in the old Great West Conference days when the Bison were still transitioning, there was a pretty good matchups over the years yeah, against these two. 22 points in the last 10 minutes and Heckendorf and Walker, they've hooked up a few times for some fun uh, finishes of games during their tenure here at NDSU. Let's take a look at that Bobcat scoring recap. Bison did it relatively quickly, just 127 on that drive, four plays, 67 yards. Capped off by a 35-yard Lance Dunn touchdown run. Bruce Anderson also ran for a 23-yard gain on that drive. Now those two those two plays should have Cal Poly a little worried because they were two different total blocking schemes and they both worked extraordinarily well for NDSU. Anderson's run was a power play, a little pull from the guard. He pops it. And that zone play that we showed you on the Telestrator as well and how effective that works. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Here's and here is, Anderson. here is Anderson. There's a missed block in the hole that time by Joey Ruiz. And then finally, Anderson forced out of bounds by Kitu Humphrey, who has started every game the last two seasons for Cal Poly. Probably the most experienced defender on the team. And the kid to notice that was downfield on that long run is Colin Connor, number 64. We talked in the pregame show about he's transitioning into that new position for him at right guard. He was about 310 pounds. He's six foot five. And you wouldn't think that moving one spot over, you know, for these big guys to stretch one leg out to the right, but how different it is. There's, there's, uh, you know, Radens and Connor. They play, you know, side by side. They sit side by side. But it is a really big move for Connor to make. He still has a long body. He still has his running motions more like a tackle than he does uh, at a guard. And the biggest thing, I think, is you see the game so differently from the guard position than you do from the tackle because you have help on either side. You're not used to that as a tackle. You're the man on the island against the rushing in. And, uh, and, and so Colin Connor making a transition, very talented kid. He will make that transition work. 
and making his 30th consecutive start. Actually had some work done on his hips in the offseason for some hip impingement. Helped him a lot, and he talked about it this spring with us, too, about how much that did help him be uh, help him move after those hip surgeries. Let's go to the sidelines for our guy on the field here today. That's Ryan Gellner. Hey, Ryan. Hey, guys. I can uh, shed a little light on the situation, if you will. The Fargo Dome lights are controlled by a computer system. Obviously, that computer system has malfunctioned. At the current time, the Fargo Dome staff has unhooked the lights from that computer system, and they are actually, if you look up into the skywalk, they are actually going around manually turning on lights to try to get this place lit up. The lights themselves have to cool down for about eight to 10 minutes before they can turn those lights back on. That is what they are in the process of doing. So best guess would say we're anywhere from five to maybe 10 minutes away from lighting this building up. The good news is guys, is that uh, Josh Demel, Minot native, is going to join me in just a few seconds. So I'll throw it back upstairs to you. We'll try to find enough light to uh, pull in Mr. Demel, and then uh, we're going to go from there. So I'll throw it back up to you guys, and we're going to find some light. I did see some guys uh, when we were walking down to do our, our live hit during the pregame show that, that had the harnesses on. You could tell they were up uh, in the rafters looking at something. We now know that they were dealing with some lights. All right, let's go back down to Ryan, who's joined by a special guest. A uh, couple of old Minot guys chatting a little bit. Josh Demel, of course, uh, the actor. He was on NBC's Las Vegas and has done a ton since then. Uh, look at this guy with the light, though, first of all. A little light for the interview. Jo I mean, you got to improvise, right? We are improvising. We didn't expect this. It's your first time ever inside the Fargo Dome for a Bison football game, yeah. though. What would you think yeah. of that? I'm, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed with the electric system here. Okay, before the electric system, when there were fireworks, there was a tunnel walk when the lights were supposed to go off. What'd you think? This is this is really something that I have uh, I've wanted to do my whole life. You know, growing up, NDSU was always a powerhouse, and you know, over the last several years, they become just I mean, dominant. So I watch them every week, but this is the first time I've actually been here to see a game, and it's unbelievable. Yeah, it's, yeah and you've it's, seen it's everything is advertised. You've seen big time football games. Uh, the entrance that the Bison have. Pretty cool. It's pretty great, man. It's pretty great. It's uh, you know, I, I just love the energy of the fans here. I mean, that's the it's so loud in this team. I mean, they look faster than ever. They can score in a hurry. That's for sure. Tell us what you're doing back in town. Of course, uh, you live out in L.A. Uh, doing some movies. We'll talk about that in a second. But what are you doing back in the state? Well, I'm doing uh, work for the North Dakota Tourism. Uh, we started in Bismarck yesterday. Did a did a bunch of stuff at the Heritage Center, saw some earth lodges outside of Mandan, uh, did some kayaking down the Missouri, and today was the highlight to, uh, to come here and, and see my first Bison game. Let's not joke, uh, you love to come back. You told me when we talked prior to the game that you love uh, when you're in the Minot area, when you're at the lake, yeah. you love this area. There's something special about here. Yeah, absolutely. I've, I've actually been here, this is probably the fourth time this summer. I fly into Fargo, I got a cabin close to here, I got a bunch of friends that live in Fargo, so. Uh, I think this is probably the most I've flown back and forth since I left 25 years ago. You did the coin toss today, the honorary captain. You flipped the tail. The Bison lost the toss. I did, I did. and uh, Easton Stick wasn't very happy with me. He looks at me and goes, you can't toss it any better than that? I'm like, sorry, dude. You were throwing the football around uh, before the game. I saw you playing catch with a couple of assistant coaches, things like that. You can still wing it for an old Minot State quarterback. A little bit, but I have to go ice my elbows now. That's the problem. I can only throw about 30 balls, and then I'm done for the day. Josh, tell us what you're working on now. Obviously, a lot of success in the acting career, Transformers. You could name movie after movie. What are you working on now? Uh, I'm finishing a movie that I directed last summer called The Buddy Games. Um, we're about done. I think we're going to finish it this next week. And I'm just very excited about that. That's pretty much what my focus is now, and then I'll probably go back to work October, November. Tell us a little bit about the difference between acting and directing. A lot more responsibility, especially when you're in it. I'm also in the movie, so uh, I don't know if I would recommend doing that because I, you know I'm so busy figuring out what the shot is and all the stuff that goes into you know directing, and then I'd forget that oh, I'm in this scene. I got to learn my stuff, so. Uh, it was it was the most uh, empowering, uh, terrifying, and uh, exciting thing that I think I've ever done. 
take it on was a big deal. And I, you know, I can't even believe they let me do it. Like, you're going to give me money to direct? Okay. But the movie's great. It's really, really funny. That'll be out when? We're, we haven't shown it to anybody yet. So it's, it's we'll, we'll, we'll show it to distributors sometime in the next couple months. And I'm guessing spring or summer of next year. All right. Josh Demel, his very first Bison football game. Always giving back. And uh, why don't you give a quick plug to North Dakota Tourism? Hey. This is spread all, all over North Dakota. Right? All over, back in Minot, everywhere else. Well, I don't have to tell you about North Dakota. You know how great this state is. Uh, tell your friends. I'm proud to be a part of this, this campaign. I love this state, and I love to tell the world about it. So thank you. And you've done well as an ambassador at that. We appreciate it. Thanks, brother. All right, good to see you, Josh. Take care. Guys, back upstairs to you. Well, thank goodness Josh Dumel was here to help us. Yeah with this broadcast in this time and uh, he has been a great ambassador and, for the state and he really can still wing it i saw him uh, on the dan patrick show throw it 50 plus 60 <laughs> yards i mean he he can he can throw the football yeah and he's a guy too that was playing catch with devin Kleiman, chris Kleiman's son and then darius shepherd came sprinting across the field <laughs> as he was about to walk off into the tunnel and got a quick picture with him as well so good to have josh here for his first bison football game <laughs> not impressed with the power outage but <laughs> we'll get things figured out here in the home and take a quick time out and be back with more as we try to get the power on, try to get the lights on so we can actually play. 9.57 to go in the first quarter. Now, are we going to that when we come back? When, when we see it pop up, March, yeah. March, March, March. Buying, building, or refinancing? Start with a Gate City Bank, Blue Standard pre-approval, and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCityBank.com for a better way of life. Member FDIC equal housing lender. Well, the good news is it's brighter. The bad news is it's still not bright enough. Not bright enough, yes. The iris of the camera is open a little bit more at home. It looks brighter than it actually is here. Coach Kleiman playing the waiting game along with everyone else. Trying to keep everybody loose. And again, we're get everybody ready to roll. You go through your warm ups and your routine. You play five minutes, now you get to sit around for a while. Cal Poly will receive a kickoff from Cam Peterson. This happened right as we went to break, where the lights went out. I think we're getting pretty close here. Maybe just a couple of minutes away. Here's a look at Chris Kleiman, speaking with the team physicians and some of the other folks. We have a good low angle of that last uh, and the only touchdown so far that we want to show you. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Here's Bacon and Bolson. Those two guys are going to double team to the inside and take care of the nose. But what I want you to watch are the shoulders right here of this down defensive lineman. You're going to see Zach Johnson, number 68, come in, cut him, turn those shoulders, and then watch where the ball goes because it's going to come right down this slot in for a touchdown. Pono Faaji is 97. That gets moved there. Beautiful job by Johnson turning those guys. Again, we talked about how uh, Dunn is able to stay patient, stay patient. Got a little bump from Bacon and off to the races. The second line guys were wiped out by that really good zone blocking scheme. So those defensive linemen, they went, not only did they go nowhere, they went backwards and took care of the linebackers, wiped out some of their own teammates to make that run look as easy as it was for Dunn. And you feel good for a guy like Lance Dunn to experience a touchdown again. It was certainly not 100% in the national championship game against James Madison, but played a critical role. Carried the ball a handful of times, had one really big run. And when that injury initially happened with his hip, there, there was, was some concern that he may not ever play again. Yeah, there the legitimate uh, fright and fear for for him for Dunn to be able to play again. So just the fact that that Lance came back and played in the national championship game that was really awesome. And of course we talked about it too as he scored that touchdown. He was on pace to break some touchdown scoring records because his uh, 12 touchdowns that early was far and away uh, more than anyone else in the country at that time. And uh, and still, it's like I said, great to see him back. The, the running back combination that NDSU has, it's really a challenge for the coaches and the coordinators to find places to use all those guys. Dunn was averaging 85 and a half yards a game on the ground before he got hurt and missed seven games with that hemp injury. He did have 12 touchdowns. 
I think we probably are pretty close uh, to I having enough there. light. Well, the biggest thing you worry about as a coach is to make sure no one tightens up in this situation. Fundar is in the crowd. You know, people talk about North Dakota State's defense, and it is and was very good last year. Number one score, number two scoring defense in the nation. Only gave up 148 pass yards a game, which was third best. Total, in terms of yardage allowed per game, was first. But people do overlook the offense a little bit last year, LT. It was the 12th best total offense in FCS. 47% on third down, 39 points a game. 272 rushing yards per game, which was number four in the nation. But they did a lot of good things on the offensive side of the ball. The Bison have the, the winning combination, especially in the playoffs. What do coaches like Chris Kyman tell you in the playoffs? What do you have to do? You have to run the ball, and you have to stop, be able to stop the run. And that's exactly what NDSU was, did. You talked about the, uh, the rushing. The Bison, uh, you know, second in scoring, fourth in rushing. They had over 4,000 rushing yards last year at 272 a game. That's pretty good. And then the defense. The NDSU's defense gave up 19 touchdowns in the whole season, a season <laughs> that included 15 games. Had 36 total takeaways as well, 22 interceptions. Teams were just 25% on third, third down. down. And they got a lot of guys back from that. Defense. You know, we haven't even really talked about the linebackers. Dan Marlette, Levi Jordheim, both missed a lot of time last year. They're both seniors. Yeah, Marlette's knee injury happened early in the year. Uh, that happened right here. Uh, Levi Jordheim's happened, I believe that was, well, it was in uh, Brookings is when that knee injury happened. And Jordheim came back, and and uh, he's ready to go. And he's playing his senior year, number 45 right there, Levi from Dickinson. And, and one of the cool things about Levi, I think, is that if you talk to him, he will never talk your ear off, ever. But the respect that he has as being a leader by example on the team was shown and shown brightly in that his teammates voted him a captain this year because it, because that just, it shows you a lot, I think, about uh, about his, his ability to lead by what he does more than what he says, if that makes sense any sense and we should mention this LT because I think it's one of the biggest stories in the NFL certainly from our neck of the world oh Chris, yeah, Chris Board, Board has made the Baltimore oh, Ravens 53 man roster a guy that was undrafted largely went unnoticed missed some time in his senior year had to switch positions midway through his senior year to allow Jabril Cox to play to be signed, goes in as a special teamer, leads the NFL in preseason tackles, and now he's on the 53-man roster for the Ravens. Unbelievable. It, it, to be honest, his career here at NDSU largely went unnoticed, except by those within the you know the program. But he made he came here as a safety, he went a made a position uh, switch to linebacker. He was a dynamo though on special teams, and then a man who uh, who is the special teams coach with where he's at has some ties to NDSU, so that certainly helps a little bit, I, I believe. And, uh, you know, if you, if you can get it done on special teams, you've got a place on a team, and that's what Board did to earn a spot in a 53-man roster. He would probably not be on top of your list of guys from last year's team to make it in the NFL. Well, congratulations to him that he did. We talked about getting switched. And he made four starts, and it just didn't go well. The oh, that's safety, is, you mean. It just yeah, did yeah, not go did well not. his sophomore year and was willing to make the change, and it's worked out for him. But most importantly, LT, he was a great special team player. Yep. That's why he made the Ravens. Camp Peterson on for another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Taken at the two-yard line by Brock Mortensen. He finds a crease. Pretty good run there for the true sophomore. He was the only true freshman to take a snap last year for Cal Poly. Jalen Allison making the tackle. Jalen Winbush is in on that tackle as well. Let's take a look at that Cal Poly offense. Starting lineup brought to you by Shields. Pretty good offensive line, LT. Harry Whitson, Tyler Wisenhunt, and Sam Ogie, three experienced guys. 
We talked about Jenkins' pro throw. We'll also see plenty of backs. Jenkins hangs on to it. Nowhere to go that time. Derek Tusker taking him down after a gain of one. Flag comes in. First flag of the game. I ran into Harry Whitson's uncle, actually, before the game when we were waiting for our pregame show. Talked to him a little bit, and I said, yeah, I think your nephew like what shift. I've seen on tape. Two players in motion at the same time offense. Five-yard penalty, first down. Five-yard penalty will back up Cal Poly inside their own 25-yard line. I think the Bison on that play did an outstanding job of making it difficult for Jenkins to decide what he wanted to do with the ball. He was thinking pitch for a, lot, a while. He was thinking quarterback run for a while. And if you're not just reacting immediately, the defense has won that possession. Jenkins out of the shotgun here on first and long. Inside handoff to pro throw. The guy has been a workhorse over his career at Cal Poly. Gains about five yards up to the 28. Robbie Grinsley making the stop for the Bison. To show you how important the fullback is on the Nodak Insurance Company replay here, we'll see Prothrow making a nice job. The, after Prothrow's injury last year, the man who replaced him got over 1,300 yards. So without the fullback dive, their offense does not exist. That's how important it is and critical it is for the Mustangs. Jenkins keeps it. Dragged down on the backside, the Bison defense. All over that one, and again, it's Tuska. Young man that has just continued to get better and better. Led the team in sacks last year with seven and a half. 91 in the bottom of your screen, running down the play. Somewhere he's going to get countered, because as an offense, you can't let the backside guy track and trail that fast and that aggressive. You'll have to try to pick on him, but until then, Tuska makes plays. But you see how he stayed squared. He really played that well, hunted it down from behind. Not only are these defensive linemen big, they're fast. Jenkins will throw it this time. Fires on target and caught. And that was the top target a year ago, and he's back again. J.J. Koski, a junior out of San Ramon Valley High School, started all 23 games of his career for the Mustangs. Isolation, Koski does a real good job. Gets right into the heart in the middle of the sternum there of Marquise Bridges and is able to break that off to the sideline on his side. No doubt Koski was the top receiver last year. A lot of those were just go routes on play action fakes. Offensive lineman moved early, Zach Shalcross, senior. Missed two games of injury, did make eight starts in 2017. And he's a guy that claims to be a descendant of Abraham Lincoln. Prove him wrong. Uh, <laughs> claims. Cal Poly's website is full of really insightful information. There is Zach, 6'4", 280. He also mixes and produces music under the name Verzaki. There you go. That's really all you need to know about Zach Shalcross. Tell me more. <laughs> Jenkins keeps on trouble, got rid of it, incomplete. Intended target on the play was Ryan McNabb. Levi Jordheim was there, pressure applied by Stanley Jones. Well, that play is designed to try to get Jones to suck into the play action. See where the play goes and the fake goes? Jones is able to come out and beat the block from the wing. And just no opportunity for, there for Jenkins. As soon as the cut doesn't happen, Jones is able to stay on his feet, does not let the blocker get into his legs. So as soon as he beats the cut, the play is blown up. Jenkins will keep it this time around Jordheim. And a good game for Jenkins, about eight yards before he is dragged down. By Grimsley once again. Your safety against an option typically has to make a bunch of run fit tackles. Grimsley's been in on a few. He'll be in a lot more today. Dan Marlette also coming over from his Mike linebacker position to make the stop. Just, just think of some of those games against some other option teams, like Colton Hegel had some big tackle games. So far, Grimsley has been in on a few, and now he rolls down into the box. Jenkins, pitch outside. There's some room to the outside. And a first down again for Cal Poly. They continue to convert here on third down on this drive as Brock Mortensen picks it up. I think it was James Hendricks that lost the outside contain. Nodak Insurance Company replay as this one comes at you. 
He makes the read, you get the pitch, yes, the block. Number six inside, got pinned. Allison's trying to do as much as he can to keep the play inside. The first half, or excuse me, the first down had already been made, but the key block was the block on the safety, James Hendricks. He got pinned by one of the slot backs, I believe, thus the first down. And that did not happen a lot last year for Cal Poly. They did not block well on, on the perimeter. Jenkins to throw again, pressure coming. Butler has Jenkins and drags him down for a big loss of 13 yards at the 50 yard line. I saw two deep routes, both covered. There's a, a cross, a deep cross the middle, and then you exit back in the middle. So nothing open, Jenkins is trying to buy some time and Caleb Butler runs him down. Uh, that's what you want as a court, as a defensive end. You want an opportunity to get in there. Five sacks for Caleb last year. He's got 12 in his career right now. The senior from Coon Rapids. A former walk-on along with Aaron Steidel. Two seniors that are starting as former walk-ons. Pro throw gets the carry, sneaks through a hole. Grimsley on another tackle. Gain of about five. Obviously, NDSU, Brian, has had some success in their walk-on program. But recently, the Bison have had such big senior classes that there hasn't been a lot of opportunities for more walk-on kids to earn spots because there hasn't been attrition. The kids that are coming here are buying into the program early, and they're staying for their four years. How about Aaron Steidel? And there's a look at Levi Jordheim, another walk-on. Walk Two on. of those guys are captains this year. Certainly respected by their peers as well. Third and long. Worst position for the Mustangs. Inside handoff again and pro throw. Tough guy to bring down. Pretty good chunk of yardage there to get down to the 33-yard line. Grimsley another tackle. Fourth and about six. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Hand it off to your big man up the middle. Gets through Butler. And then Steidel also getting rolled pretty hard. Nice job down the field by the offensive center, Harry Whitson. He moved from guard to the center position. But that run, allowing the Mustangs an opportunity to score. 50-yard field goal attempt here for Sabletti. On target. If it's long enough, it's good. And it is. 50 yards for Sublet. His previous long 43, that is a new career long for the senior, and Cal Poly is on the board with 4.09 to go. It's a really nice day in the Valley. Uh, uh, if you've been outside, you know that today, but uh, I'm sure that he's loving the fact that he's kicking indoors. Helped him gain a few extra on that. It was a low line drive kick, but he'd had plenty to clear it. Drive that lasted almost six minutes. Look at Tim Walsh. But did you see exactly where most of the production on that drive happened? Where did it happen? From the fullback position. That is the way Coach Walsh's offense is designed for that fullback to be the main ball carrier. And that last fullback run on third down, you're thinking third and long, you got to pass it, right? Nope, we're going to hand it off to our man, get our kicker in a position to make a long one, and he did. One thing Nick Gazer talked about with pro throw is people don't realize how much that kid gets hit when he doesn't have the ball. <laughs> yeah, because you're always hitting the You're always hitting the, the fullback. fullback. So that will come on to kick this one away. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Anderson from his own goal line. Gets what he can. Runs into a wall of tacklers across the 20 to the 23-yard line. Feels like it's been forever since <laughs> NDSU's had the football, and it kind of has been after the lights-out delay. And it's still four minutes left in the first quarter. <laughs> got a long way to go. <laughs> Take a look at your Bobcats scoring recap. 10 plays, 39 yards, a couple of big third down conversions for Cal Poly. And Sublet able to hit the 50 yard field goal. Ty Brooks to the outside. Boy, this is a dangerous guy in space. Brooks was grabbed onto at the ankle. And that allowed him to not go much, much further as Kitu Humphrey made the tackle. Still a gain of a first down all the way up to the 41. If Humphrey doesn't make this tackle, it is a long touchdown run from Ty Brooks. We've talked about his explosive ability. He decides to cut back, tries to step through. Humphrey, the junior, 
with a hand, uh, the hand on that ankle. He's one of the starters who came back from last year, almost overruns the play, breaks down enough to get a hold of Brooks and prevent the touchdown. All three backs, big chunks of yardage so far on the ground here in the first quarter. Back to the power game for Anderson. Able to drag a tackler across the 45 to the 46 yard line. Gain of five. Nick Navarro making that stop for Cal Poly. But you, you can you know, usually in a football game, a superior offensive line, uh, you'll start to see that in the second half. It's physical nature. You're seeing it already. You can tell NDSU is much, much more physical up front than Cal Poly. The block that time. Anderson trying to get outside. Shakes off a couple of tacklers and Bruce Anderson hurdles his way down to the 36-yard line. Some nifty running there for the senior. Andrew Bonnet would be very proud of the way he finishes this one. Nodak Insurance Company replay using the speed, trying to get a, a tackle on the outside from Sproles, the freshman. Boy, Sharky Reza had the last shot at him right there, and somehow Bruce able to keep his balance and stay in bounds. Navarro coming all the way over to make the tackle. Play action. Stick dropping it off to Nate Jensen, who made a fantastic catch, but he was out of bounds. Boy, that's a really good job of adjusting to the ball that was not on the spot that Jensen wanted it. Couldn't keep the one foot down. Stick just two of five for 16 yards so far today. Stick's first read, obviously, to the near side, but on the high side of the field, he had a one on one that if he had stayed just a little patient and looked back off to his left, but boy, what a nice job with the hands. It is wide. Jensen did not hang on to the football regardless. Second and ten. Stick under pressure, going to take off with it. Finds the middle of the field before he is cut down at the 22-yard line. Good enough for another North Dakota State first down. Riza coming over to make the stop. Well, Easton Stick, we've seen over his uh, his career, his ability to run. Think of the longest play from scrimmage last year. What was it? It was an 80-yard touchdown run against Youngstown. Uh, against uh, yeah, it was against Youngstown. Youngstown yeah, the 80-yard uh, jump last year. So Stick can break it big by running the ball as well. Stick on the slant to Dallas Freeman. Inside the five, down to the four-yard line. Freeman, another former walk-on who has earned a starting spot, and a guy that Easton Stick really likes, LT. In spring is when Dallas Freeman kind of emerged, if you will. Nodak Insurance Company replay, a slant, catches it at the 10, tries to break it in, and yes, Easton likes him. Easton trusts him, and, uh, and those two are on the same page. Dallas Freeman is a kid in the wide receiver group that is not real deep, that needs to have a big year for NDSU. And I think he will. Stick will keep it up the middle. Dives ahead before he is taken down at the two-yard line. Ruiz got in there first. A number of Mustangs also coming in to converge for that tackle. Ruiz just played one game last year. So a guy that's getting his feet wet here this afternoon, second and goal. He's a sophomore, 6'1", 230. Anderson working off a block. Boy, Navarro came in to make a nice tackle. Right at the line of scrimmage. Anderson able to lunge ahead for a game of one. That's a solid smack here from Navarro. Coming from the left, he glides, he glides, he sets, and then he takes the momentum away. And that finally is the end of what has been a very, very long first quarter. 7-3, North Dakota State leads on the doorstep at the one-yard line. When we come back, 
here on the KBOI KFY Television Network. Hey, Jeff, what's going on? Good morning, Jeff. Back here for the start of the second quarter. 7-3 North Dakota State. Abizen with a third and one. Well, third and goal, we should say, at the one-yard line. Same look at the formation. Three tight ends and your fullback. Robbins into the backfield. Done. Powers his way over the goal line. His second touchdown here this afternoon. real difficult to get enough bodies at the point of attack to try and slow down that play because if you load it and load the a gap that strong beforehand stick will just audible out of it and take an easy one the other way Peterson on for the extra points he adds that and the bison have extended their lead of 14 three just three seconds into the second quarter NDSU easily over 100 yards rushing already. 117 before that last play. A couple of big runs. Bruce Anderson had a nice long run in that first one. Of course, Dunn's first touchdown was about 35 yards, I think. And the Bison averaging 11.8 yards per rush so far here this afternoon. And the run game beat up Cal Poly bad last year. Um, you know, we. Well, obviously injuries don't you know never help anything but in four of their first five games their opposing team you know they gave up a hundred yard rusher well as bad as as bad as the rushing was LT Cal Poly was 121st against the pass yeah but in the big sky that's not necessarily surprising it seems like to throw it a little more out there B. Latamua is back for Cal Poly. Along with Mortensen, another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kickoff your planning season for Peterson Farm Seed. It's Mortensen from the one. Follows his blocks before he is taken down by a scrub of Bison. Jalen Wimbush in there again. Help make that tackle. Mortensen, the kid who returned that and played as a true freshman last year. One of those wing back positions. You can always see how important special teams are, and it's been a little bit of a point of emphasis for NDSU this year, is how many of those uh, quote unquote starters play on special teams. It's not just a get somebody in there to run down and cover a kickoff type deal. Well, that play was messed up from the start. Mortensen looked like he was off. Two offensive linemen on the left side jumped. Take a look at that Bobcat scoring recap for North Dakota State. A very efficient drive. Nine plays, 77 yards. And just four minutes Ball and five start. seconds as Offense. Dunn scores his second for touchdown. 61. Five yard penalty. Coming off first of down. a fall camp, heading into your first game of the year. Uh, it's almost every coach in America will tell you the one thing we don't want to see in our first game are negative penalties pre-snap. It, mean, it means you're making mistakes. You're not ready. That was one of those that Coach Walsh will be upset about. Cal Poly already has three of those. Jenkins keeps it this time. It's a couple of yards up to the 20-yard line. Dan Marlette in on that tackle. We also see Blake Williams, who I think is going to have a sneaky good year. Played in all 15 games a year ago. Jack Darnell in at defensive tackle as well. Jenkins tracked down again from behind. The Bison defensive ends doing a good job in pursuit. And again, Stanley Jones there to help make that tackle. Yeah, you have to assume sometimes some type of a counter, some play back against the flow is going to come. It hasn't come yet. There's Jones, the backside defensive end, running down the play. And some help again there from Blake. 
Third and long. Third and ten specifically here for Cal Poly. Jenkins hit again in the hole by Marlette and dropped after a gain of one. Levi Jordheim also around the ball. Nodak Insurance Company replay. This one at first looked like it would go a little bit further because Jones gets cut. But number 48, Dan Marlette, is able to pursue and make the quarterback cut it back inside. The Bison just want that play to keep going sideways. Go ahead and run it sideways as long as you want. Our speed will eventually catch up to you before you can get a first down. Cal Poly's 51 rushing yards here in the first half. Sublet on for another punt. Nice height tie spiral. Grimsley calls for the fair catch and makes it at the 37-yard line. Really nice defensive possession there from the Bison. And because of that, the offense gets to work on a short field. Whether you're buying, building, or refinancing Gate City Bank, home loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. North Dakota State with an 11-point lead. Go back to the run game. Anderson stacked up that time. Nice job by Joey Ruiz coming in to make that stop after a gain of three. Now you've said his name a few times. There's been a few guys in there on some, uh, on some tackles from Cal Poly, but if the defense can't get off the field and maybe this possession and the next one, it's going to be a real long day for those guys out there in white uniforms on the defensive side. More room this time as Anderson continues to bowl his way inside Cal Poly territory to the 48-yard line, and he has a Bison first down. Boy, number eight running tough in between the tackles here today. Well, all good runners will never quit, and we've seen Dunn and Anderson do that. He spins away. They're trying to dig the ball out of there. He gets both hands on the ball. And here it's coming right at you. Look at the eyes. The eyes are the thing that that te that kind of tells you that you know uh, someone's comfortable in what they're doing. He's trying to read the blocks. He feels some pressure. They're trying to grab the ball. Spins away from it. First down. Carter Nichols making that tackle from his safety position. Now the stretch play to Anderson. Got a block from Brock Robbins. Bounces outside before Nick Navarro throws him down at about the 40-yard line. Still a good pickup on first down. Nodak Insurance Company replay. We're going to see number 67 in there, Cordell Volson. Boy, Brock Robbins, a great job to take away that initial guy to allow Anderson to pick up about nine yards on the play. But Volson is in on a rotation. We talk a lot defensively on how the defensive line is rotating all the time. Cordell Volson is, is a person who's going to play probably multiple positions in the offensive line this year. How about this? Robbins getting a rare, as a matter of fact, I think that's for his first ever career rushing attempt. He has caught a few passes, but I believe that is the first time he's carried the football at North Dakota State. He's got a first down. The junior from Cavalier in his fullback position, he's really a hybrid. I know he's playing fullback. He carried it from the fullback, but he has to know uh, the tight end position group. Uh, he plays some of that. He is the type of guy that they that they mean the Bison would like to see have an Andrew Bonnet type of uh, versatility. Brooks has to cut it back inside. Nice open field tackle there by Jason Lee. Well, Colin Connors coming off. I think. He's hobbling a little hobbling bit. Hobbling off. Yep, that is Colin. 64 going to the sideline to get looked at. I did not, I was watching Connor come off. I did not see who went in for his position. We'll see if we catch that. But Colin Connor did come hobbling off on that, uh, on that play. Looks like Volson is also in there. And Bacon and moves, Bacon moves moved from over. right guard to the left guard. Okay. Stick to throw. 
Now he's going to run. Running back across the field. This is what makes Easton stick so tough to defend. To the 20. Down to the 10-yard line before Riza makes the tackle. Well, Stick did have 663 rushing yards last year. We talked about how he had that 80-yarder against Youngstown. And here, as he finishes this, the Bison move inside the 10. Let's go down to Ryan Gellner. Hey, guys, just a quick report. First International Bank and Trust sideline report. Colin Connor had his left ankle very quickly retaped. He's back on his feet, and he will go back into the football game when needed, guys. It's good news for the Bison left guard. And with North Dakota State having a bye week next week, anybody that gets dinged up a little bit will have an extra week to rest up. Chris Kleiman calling a timeout as North Dakota yeah, State was set to timeout. snap it. 9.06 to go, 14-3. There was only two seconds down. They ran out of play clock. So the Bison, instead of giving up yards, obviously at that position of the field, you use one of your timeouts to get everybody on the same page. North Dakota State University. This North Dakota is, State racking up the yardage on the ground. You mentioned LT 171 yards. This is the 122nd season of football for NDSU. Chris Kleiman in his fifth year as the head coach here, his eighth season, of course, uh, as the uh, coordinator before becoming the head coach. But it also is a milestone moment for the opponent. It's the 100th season of football for Cal Poly and the Mustangs, their 25th year of uh, being an FCS program as well, and it's also a milestone for Walsh. It's his 10th his, uh, year as the head coach. And to give people an idea about Cal Poly, there were 65,500 kids, freshmen, that applied to get into the school. The school took 5,500, so less than 10% of the people that apply to get to Cal Poly get in. Not an easy place, very well regarded and well respected out in the West Coast. Anderson bouncing outside. Bruce Anderson, touchdown. <laughs> Nodak Insurance Company replay. Checkout stick. Gets his left shoulder in there to free up the outside. Now, prior to that setup and before the timeout, Anderson was lined up as one of the three receivers on the wide side. Timeout moved him into the tailback position, and then he scores the touchdown running. Peterson gets through the extra point, and North Dakota State has taken over and taken command here in the second quarter. 21-3 with nine minutes to go as Anderson scores his first touchdown here of 2018. Back in a moment. Look at Bruce Anderson, the only NDSU running back to play in all 15 games last year. Was really a workhorse, and the Bison really needed him to stay healthy. As wounded as the team was in the backfield, over 1,200 rushing yards and 12 touchdowns in 2017. Averaging 10 yards a carry so far today. Line drive, kick deep, taken at the goal line by Juwan Campbell. Considered maybe the fastest player on the team for Cal Poly and a nice special teams tackle by Josh Hayes Played as a true freshman in the national championship game last year for North Dakota State Yeah, Campbell just uh, I was told flat out the fastest guy on the team. That's why he's back there He's one of the wing backs trying to work his way into that rotation But other than a play here or there from pro throw up the middle uh, The Mustangs offense hasn't found a lot yet Cal Poly has to find a way to stay on the field. Pro throw stacked up again at the line of scrimmage. The Bison have been really good against the run so far here today. Derek Tuska finishing off that tackle. Dan Marlette was there first. Look, if you want another example of how much that uh, Cal Poly thinks of pro throw, Coach Welsh was saying that I believe, even though he's a fullback in our offense, that if he played at NDSU, he could handle the tailback position for what the Bison do. Jenkins changing things up here. Play clock under 10. 
Jenkins keeps, pitch outside. Grimsley right there to take down Juwan Campbell. No game. Real interesting thing I think the Bison did against this option on that particular play is they took Jabril Cox and almost double stacked the middle linebacker position. He, he started about four or five yards behind Marlette. Here's your North Dakota Soybean Council. Fun fact, did you know vegetable oil used for cooking and baking found in the grocery store is actually soybean oil? I did not know that. <laughs> there you go, now you do. Another third and long here for Cal Poly. The Mustangs have been in this situation quite a few times here this afternoon. Jenkins to throw, has time, airing it out one-on-one -on -one for Koski. He's got it! Inside buys in territory, down to the 35-yard line. James Hendricks makes the tackle for North Dakota State. A lot of success with that pass play. Just one-on-one -on -one deep down the field. You see Hendricks, the free safety, getting sucked all over to the near side. There is no deep middle safety. Koski makes the catch. Hendricks a little bit too far back there. Three touchdowns. Last year caught the longest 60. There's the biggest play of the game for the Mustangs. Back to pro throw, and again, not much room. Number five has not been able to get going, mainly because number 48 has shadowed it. Marlette, another tackle. There is Dan Marlette. Good to see him moving after his knee injury. Dan, a senior from Sioux Falls, Washington. Played in only four games last year. And he is all-conference talent caliber. Now Jenkins out of the shotgun with three receivers in the formation. Squeaking through a hole that time is Malcolm Davis. First carry for him. Davis comes from a football family. His father, Wendell Davis, played six seasons with the Chicago Bears. 3,000 career yards, 14 touchdowns. I thought the Mustangs did a good job of getting second level. Marlette, see this double stack? Here's what I'm talking about. We missed it, that double stack. Spying the quarterback. Pro throw, bouncing off a tackle, and then Greg Menard, great pursuit from the backside, takes him down. Short of the first down. So fourth and one coming up here for Cal Poly. Offense staying on the field. So the speed of the defensive ends coming to play once again. Greg Menard is really good with after that knee injury to see his explosiveness on that particular play. Of course, we know how hard he worked to get back. Fourth down. Jenkins finds a little bit of a crease and dives ahead. It's going to be very close. I'm not sure if he got there to looking at the spot right now. He needed we'll to get to at least. I think we'll see the change, but I don't think he got it. He needed Here. to get it past the 24-yard line. Isolation on Marlette takes care of pro throw, and right behind him is Levi Jordheim trying to cut Jenkins off. You saw Jenkins' helmet pop off. Well, if he got it, it's going to be by just the nose of the football. From where we sit in the Fargo Dome, it's not the best angle, but my gut says he's short. That's right. He is short by about a half yard. North Dakota State defensively gave up only nine first downs on 25 fourth down attempts. So the Bison very good a year ago in that category. Very good so far here in 2018. We'll step aside and be back with more from the Dome. 21-3 Bison. <laughs> Buying, building, or refinancing? Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre-approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCityBank.com for a better way of life. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. North Dakota State starting this drive at their own 24-yard line. Back to the ground game, and Dunn bouncing outside. He's got room before he is taken down on the play by Carter Nichols after getting close to a first down, and I think he's got it at the 34. 
Kodak Insurance Company replay and isolation on Dunn. You'll see Kaporis right there, number nine. I think that was, is that Kaporis out is. there? Yeah, yep. number 19, making a little bit of a block. Trying to work his way into the wide receiver rotation. What a weird road here for Kaporis. Was at Western Michigan, left after P.J. Fleck went to Minnesota, got hurt, missed all of last season. It's done again, gaining about four yards. Getting up to the 38-yard line. Redshirt freshman Andy Boy, and also number 80 trying to work his way. He was in on that particular play as, a, as that wide receiver group is trying to uh, get a little bigger. Is that one way to put it? And not size, but in numbers. Stick will throw, hanging on to it. Now flaring it out to Jensen, who was dragged out on the play. And that will be a pass interference on Jarek Rosales. Nodak Insurance Company replay isolation. There's going to be a little hand fighting. Yep, yep the ball's Freeman. in the air. Pass interference. And then he's tugged down. Defense, number two. 15-yard penalty, automatic. First down. Dallas is senior. The DB group, the defensive backfield, that uh, brings the most experience and has the, the most depth for the Mustangs coming back into this year. Keeps the feet moving. Nichols in on that tackle again after a game of three. Helmet came off. Of Navarro. In today's game plan against Cal Poly, there is, I mean, it's in there, but you're not going to see much uh, play action on a first and ten when Robbins goes back into a power eye situation. That That is the Bison telling Cal Poly, we're going to run it, and let's see if you can stop it. Anderson bouncing this one out. Bubbled out that time by Carter Nichols, and then hammered out of bounds on the play by Fenton Will. Maybe a gain of a yard on that play. Cal Poly may have called it. Timeout Time for out. an injured player. Oh, they're looking at uh, it's like Jason Lee. Yeah, Jason Lee, the uh, junior linebacker. Pretty good athlete. I know he's starting the season at linebacker, but he at, uh, at the will spot, but there's a chance. Uh, we were told that he might be moving in the in and among those linebacker positions to try to get the best athletes on the field. How good of a look at look at why he's injured because Cordell Volson absolutely buries him right into the turf. Volson was playing right guard on that play, pulling to try to get out in front. He did get out in front. Volson, a big young man, 6'6, 311. Stick to throw on third and six. Open receiver, and it is caught by Darius Shepard. And it takes a couple of different Mustangs to bring him down after he gets across the 30-yard line down to the 29. The type of pass pattern where Stick needs a lot of time, and he got it. Number 20, that's who we're watching, squares out. Stick with a strong arm, hits him right between the numbers, and Easton Stick was clean. He was very, very clean in the pocket. He had a lot of time to throw it. Kevin Howell on that coverage for Cal Poly, a transfer from Nevada. Shepherd, really, 41 receptions okay, a year ago. I was just going to say it's a tough position for the defender because the two guys in the outside clear, so he has no help to the sideline. Her outside handoff and room to run for Anderson. Has one man to get past and can't quite do it. The safeties are staying very busy here today for 
Cal Poly as Q2 Humphrey makes a touchdown saving tackle at the 12 yard line. Well, if Cordell Molson can have a pancake, check out 74, his brother Tanner Olson, the center pulling on the play. He also drilled the Mustangs clean into the turf as the Bison and Anderson get to the 12. Well, Bruce Anderson approaching the 100 yard mark. Already here in the first half. Dunn this time, cutting it back inside. Lance Dunn has his third touchdown of the day. The Bison are running wild here in the first half. 226 rushing yards so far here today. The footwork of the offensive lineman is one of the reasons they're running. I don't know if we'll catch it here in this replay, but we see Cordell Volson getting out on the edge once again. Opens up an easy lane for Dunn to find the end zone. Peterson boots through the extra point. And North Dakota State adds another touchdown at 28 3. Bison, 138 to go here in the first half. Here's what's lost a lot in offensive linemen or the athleticism of these big guys. Watch the feet here of Tanner Volson when Volson pulls out. If you think this is easy, just try it sometime. This is very difficult on what he does. Gets out in front. Zach Johnson with a nice crackdown. The lane opens up. Done with an easy touchdown. Just try it sometime if you think it's easy. It's not. And these guys are 310 pounds. Another Peterson Farm seed kickoff. Mortensen from the seven. Back to the 23 yard line, maybe the 24. There's Adam Cofield getting on the bottom of that pile. Cofield injured through a number of games last season as well. Another one of those running backs in that stable that are very capable of carrying the football. Seven plays, 76 yards in that Bobcat scoring recap as done. Scores his third touchdown of the day. And the Bison are rolling, averaging 10 yards per carry here in the first half. Jenkins going to keep it. Outside to Mortensen. Got a pretty good seal block on the edge that time from Zach Shalcross. Across the 25 up to the 27-yard line. That was the option, and they were looking right at Stanley Jones, number 94. They, I mean he. He meaning uh, Jenkins, the uh, quarterback. Jones just kind of spied him, squared up. Jenkins figures, I'm going nowhere. If the football's going to, I need to get rid of it. Pitch it. Tries to continue to rotate. Plenty of bodies on that defensive front. Jenkins keeps it. And again, taken down. Jordan Heim, Stanley Jones. Coming in to make that tackle. Beautiful job of both of those guys right there. 45, Levi Jordheim along with Jones in order to run fits. But it's, it's another way of saying being in the right position at the right time. Don't overrun the play. Jordheim did not. He took away the cutback and only gave up a yard or two. Jenkins to throw. Steidel putting pressure on. Koski again deep and a flag comes in on Jalen Allison at about the midfield, so we'll see. Right now, the initial indication is defensive pass interference. Allison claiming he got pushed off on by Koski. Let's take a look. You decide. Pass interference, defense, number 21. Sorry, 15 yard penalty, automatic. First down. <laughs> They'll look in film sessions, and of course, when, when these teams watch film, they watch all 22. They don't have the TV copy or do the things that we do because coach Kleiman says if you know basically if you're watching film and you're watching the ball then you're doing it wrong but when they see that one again Allison who doesn't think he had the penalty will realize he actually did. Jenkins again will throw Butler picked up on the block and now Jenkins will get what he can to midfield before he is chased out of bounds by Marlette gain of six 
37 seconds to go here until halftime. And Cal Poly maybe at least getting an opportunity to kick a field goal here before going into the locker room. I'll tell you, watching Marlette run around LT, I see no ill effects from the knee. He's moving extremely well. well he really looks good. And he is playing a position as well. That, that, uh, that middle linebacker, that Mike linebacker, really important spot. And they've got a young kid, Hanky, behind him. Mortensen. But my point is, is that that's, that's a position or a spot on the field without a huge bunch of depth. Cole Karch coming in to make that tackle, and he comes off a little bit gimpy. It's a young man, Cole Karch, that when healthy can be extremely disruptive, was battling a really bad shoulder all of last year, played through it, but was something that happened in fall camp. He was probably playing at about 80% throughout 2017. Cole's a junior, comes from Germantown, Wisconsin, had three sacks last year. And uh, at, they were trying to figure out what to do with him because he has the ability to play outside, which he does as a defensive end. But then the Bison have had so many good defensive ends, they're like, all right, let's try to put a little bit more weight on you, keep your speed, and move you inside. And now he's making his mark as a defensive tackle. He's up to 270 pounds was a really good high school basketball player. was a part of a Germantown 69-game winning streak that had two state titles back in Wisconsin. Pro throw. Dragged down by three different Bison linemen, including Aaron Steidel, Greg Menard, Marlette in on another stop. Boy, that guy's been all over the place today. I was today, just going to say, you talked about the way Marlette's moving, and here will ISO on him. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Marlette gets the read, gets in there, both hands around the hips. Pro throw has no way to, nowhere to go. The other two guys help him out. Jenkins dives ahead before he's taken down by Tuska at the 40-yard line and a timeout for Cal Poly with 13 seconds left. So Let's not forget, Sublette hit a 50-yard field goal already here in the first half, so maybe 10 more yards or so to give him an opportunity. So much of defense is, is trusting what you see. You, you play a lot of defense with your eyes, and then, then coaches talk about having the game slow down for you that means you're you're making you're, you're seeing your reads, you're seeing your keys, and then you're doing it just faster. So when you're when all that is processing faster, it's called having the game slow down. And Marlette and, and Jordheim and, and everyone goes through the process, but but they're there. Well, Marlette really comes from a football family too. His brother Tim played at USD. His father is a really interesting story. He lost an arm in a motorcycle accident, continued to play high school and college football, and is now working for Sanford down in the Sioux Falls area. Pressure coming on Jenkins, spins out of it initially, and then taken down from behind by Steidel, I believe. Karch also in the area. It was Jordheim that came untouched that, that blew the timing of the play away. Right up the heart of this thing is number 45. There is no way Jenkins is able to pass that thing because he can't get his feet set. He's spinning. The Bison disrupted the timing of the play, which is always the goal of the defense. And the Bison did it well on that play. Give that sack to Karch, who was the man that came in from the backside. Karch three sacks last year. But that, that, I guess, in essence, is a, is a really good example, Brian, of, of where all stats are really team stats. You know, Levi's not going to get anything but an attaboy from his teammates, but without him coming, you know, and disrupting the timing of that, Karch does not have an opportunity to even get a sack. You know, and Anderson and the Bison have 228 rushing yards already, but we've tried to demonstrate how the offensive line makes that happen. Third and seven coming up. Jones coming oh, in, more pressure, and he drags down Jenkins back at the 46-yard line, and that will knock Cal Poly out of any opportunity for a field goal attempt, and the Bison will have a 28-3 lead heading into the locker room. Textbook swim move by a defensive end executed perfectly by Stanley Jones. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Jones, do we see it? 
no, we see the back end of it. He blows past the tackle and takes care of the quarterback. North Dakota State, a good finish to end that first half. Ryan Geller is standing by with head coach Chris Kleiman. Well, Chris, a pretty good effort both offensively and defensively. Got the exclamation point there at the end defensively. Yeah, we needed to get a stop there because they get the ball to start the second half. But we've been able to run the ball really well. Uh, that's a really good offense. Quarterback's a much better thrower than people give him credit for. They have a couple explosive plays. We were able to get a couple stops. So we got to regroup, make sure we come out with the same mindset in the second half. You mentioned your running game, but, man, your offensive line has played well again. Another dynamite. The Rams are getting after it. Chris, good luck second half. Guys. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Chris Kleiman's bunch, a 25-point lead here at halftime in the season opener at the Fargo Dome. Stay tuned. The Proceed Halftime Report is coming up next. Beth and Alex back in the studio. Lance Dunn, a big first half. The senior from Waterloo has three first-half touchdown runs. And once the lights came back on, the Bison got rolling. We'll step aside. 28-3, your halftime score. Twenty-eight three, your halftime score. North Dakota State over Cal Poly. Tim Walsh in his tenth season, hoping his Mustangs can put up a little bit of a fight coming up here in the second half. And he had a chance to catch. Uh, Ryan Geller had a chance to catch up with him. Tim, they were able to gash you a little bit with long runs. Well, we didn't tackle either. A lot of times, they, they got, their yards came after first contact. That guy's a good. All their backs are great backs. Don't get me wrong, but they, their feet are moving, and our feet are dying when we go to tackle them, and they're bouncing off against some big plays, and they're good at what they do. I assume you have to throw the ball a little bit, try to get back into this thing. What'd you tell the team at half? Well, in, in the first half, I don't think we played well, but that's no, credit to them. Basically, we got to play each play, and we just got to play better football. I didn't like the way we played, and I can't. I can't control the score, but I can control hopefully how we play. All right. Good luck to you, second half. Great. Thank you. Tim Walsh hoping his guys can certainly tackle a little better. And again, he kind of mentioned credit to them. The backs are tough to tackle. They can make you miss in space. And uh, we have seen that from Lance Dunn, Bruce Anderson, among others over the years here. I, th I think Coach Walsh did an ex excellent job of boiling, boiling it down to one of the biggest fundamentals. You keep going until the whistle. What do coaches at every level tell you? He just simply said, their feet keep moving, our feet stop. Hey, guess who's going to win? Guess who's winning right now? Well, North Dakota State defensively, four tackles for loss, three sacks. Each team ran 30 plays in that first half. One penalty on North Dakota State for 15 yards, four for 30 on Cal Poly. The Mustangs will have the football first here to start the second half. You'd never guess by looking at the t total yardage that each team had the same, virtually the same number of plays because the Bison was already with 228 yards on the ground and you would have to assume that that is something that NDSU is going to continue to do here in this second half. Cam Peterson being set to kick off once again. Mortensen back deep with Laitumua. And Lee Mortensen two yards deep. He will take an E. And the Mustangs will start at the 25-yard line. North Dakota State LT. If things go well here in the third quarter, it may have an opportunity to get more backup, some experience, some of these freshmen that have redshirted on the field more. Redshirted or freshmen that have not redshirted. That is a new thing that uh, you ask coaches, what do you think you're going to do? And they say, we don't know yet. It's so new. Khalil Jenkins, your first half stats brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission. Did have that big passing play to J.J. Koski on third down. Jenkins buried. Loss of three. There's a kid having a day. Boy, Dan Marlette has been all over the place. Boy, he scrubs, reads, and then closes down in that quarterback beautifully. That's an ISO on Jenkins. He had no chance to try to get the pitch off because of the speed and the read that Marlette. We talked about it in the first half. Trusting your eyes, he is trusting his reads. Eight tackles already on the afternoon for the senior out of Sioux Falls. Pro throw getting the call this time. And Three different Bison players stack him up after a gain of about four yards. Stanley Jones in there. Boy, the collection of defensive ends having a very solid day, too, for NDSU. Cal Poly has been in this situation way too many times so far here today. Third and long. Not it's what this offense is built for. No, it is designed to be just the opposite. Third and three, not third and eight. 
Three receivers split wide. Jenkins on a draw, dragged down again. <laughs> Boy, Dan Marlette. But he's spying quarterback. As soon as he sees Jenkins tuck the ball under, Marlette is coming and coming hard because he sees quarterback run. Again, he reads it correctly, makes a fast move. Nodak Insurance Company replay. There, quarterback draw. Marlette's going, hey, he's not going to pass this thing. Reads it right, closes down on him. And minus yards again for the quarterback. Sublet back deep. Grimsley back to return. That snap skipped into Sublet. Knee was down, I think. Did he catch it with his knee down? He Buys did. Buys the ball inside the 10. Oh, boy. It's down for North Dakota State. Oh, boy. Now the Bison on a short field at the nine. Here's a look at it. That's Absolutely. Nice shot, guys. Hey, you got to get low because you don't want that football to scoot between your legs like a shortstop or a second baseman might. In, in, uh, but you do not, do not ever want your knee to be on the ground. Sawyer Sobelman is the long snapper who skipped that in as we look at, at Easton Sticks numbers in that first half. Brought to you by the North Dakota Beef Commission. Did not throw a ton, just 4 of 7, 48 yards. Also ran for 40 yards in that first half. And he's going to run in for a North Dakota State touchdown. And just like that, Cal Poly a special teams mistake and Stick sees all sorts of green in front of him, nine yards for the score. Yeah, Stick has the option. He is, he's making a read. Do I want to give this to Anderson? With some guys pulling in front, nope. He sees the flow go too far to his quarterback's right and scores the touchdown. Wedner with the hold, Peterson with the kick, and it's 35-3. And the issue, 13.05 to go on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Easton Stick, 12 rushing touchdowns a year ago. He's got his first here in 2018. What'd you say? Well, I was just seeing if it was still Peterson. 35-3, North Dakota State leads, 13.05 on a nine-yard Easton stick run. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit GateCityBank.com slash MyCard. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life, member FDIC. Peterson, another kickoff, and again, it's Mortensen from the goal line. This time he's got some room. Mortensen hit by Jalen Allison at the 30-yard line. A flag comes in late. I think it's Jake Smeltzer with a block in the back on the man who made the tackle. That's what I saw. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Check out the end of this. You'll see number 11 getting in the back of number 21. Right there on your screen, right along the hash mark. Boom, a little push. Right into the man carrying the ball, flag. Actually helped Allison make the tackle that <laughs> time. <laughs> Shoved him right into his legs. So now we'll back Cal Poly up to the 21. Here's a look at Jalen Allison. Played a lot of football here. Here's that stack I was talking about right there against the option. It's a unique you, look, isn't you, it? You will not see the Bison run this defense any other time this year. Well, that ball was on top of a player after it was tipped and now incomplete. I think it was Menard that got a hand on it, jumped up. They pretty much rested on the back of an offensive lineman there for a moment. And I think Aaron Steidel came diving in. Oh, or Blake Williams, one of those two guys were like they're trying to, did I just get an interception? <laughs> nope. Well, I can tell you this. I've never seen a more impressive interception from a defensive tackle than the one I saw from Nate Tangwin. Oh, yeah, that in was In the funny. national championship <laughs> game against James Madison. I mean, the ball hit him in the foot and it bounced up to him. Pro throw. Spins out of a tackle from Marlette and gains about seven yards up to the 28-yard line. Those NDSU linebackers have been so aggressive right up the middle. You saw Jordheim was in there on a blitz. Cox makes the, makes the tackle in that particular play, but just the way the offense is designed, you can... 
certainly I was going to say gamble, but it's not really a gamble. Percentages say that's where the ball's going to go, so you shove a bunch of people in there and force a third down. Third and three coming up for Cal Poly. Mustangs four of ten on third down today. Here comes a blitz from Jabril Cox, picked up. And this one across the middle and incomplete, overthrowing his targets. That time was Jenkins. Mortensen was open had that ball been delivered, but it falls incomplete. The reason it wasn't delivered and the reason it sailed a little high is because Jenkins didn't have time to get his left foot planted into the turf and follow through with it. Why? Because he had a kid with a lot of hair flying outside of the helmet that wears a number nine and a number six bearing down on him. He got hit pretty hard on that play. Didn't have a chance to follow through. Greg Menard is 96, providing that pressure. Grimsley back deep again for North Dakota State. Sublet, end over end. Grimsley lets it bounce at the 40, takes a Mustang hop inside the 25 yard line, all the way down to the 19 before it will be touched by a member of the special teams. It didn't look great in the air, but the fact that it was a low line driver, he ended up picking, what, about another 25 yards almost? Go to state. They'll bring that starting offensive unit back out, and if NDSU can score here, the Bison have a chance to maybe insert a few new pieces on that offensive line and that receiver, even potentially a quarterback. Stick will throw. Freeman left all by himself at the 25 yard line, cuts it up, and finally forced out of bounds by Jarek Rosales. At about the 41. The combo pattern on this near side, I believe, was Sproles along with Freeman underneath. See how Sproles runs that little deeper pattern? The safety gets caught up in that deeper pattern, and Freeman's wide open. A flag did come in the backfield very late in an illegal formation on North Dakota State. That will negate a 22 yard gain from Freeman. And NDSU will move it back to the 14. I, I'm guessing, but the one thing I saw pre-snap was right tackle, maybe a little bit too deep. That's the only that's the only thing I, I saw that was a little weird. And I didn't pick up the number. Phoenix Sproles getting a lot of snaps today at wide receiver. Back out there again on the near side of your screen. Room up the middle again, and there goes Bruce. To midfield, there is not a Mustang that will catch him, and he will take it 86 yards for a North Dakota State touchdown. There's a real good chance you may have just seen the longest play from scrimmage this year. <laughs> for Andy Eshoo and Roley in the beginning of the season. He had so much room to pick and choose up the middle. There were no linebackers there. There wasn't a safety till he got about 10 yards. I mean, wow, huge run. Peterson another extra point and the Bison pouring it on. 323 rushing yards. And we got a long way to go, 11-14 to go in the third quarter. Bison. Have it on lockdown, 42-3. Here's a look at Bruce Anderson, who is averaging 17 yards <laughs> per carry today. 11 carries, 185 yards and two touchdowns. He just ripped off one for 86, and he looks out of breath. Last time I checked, that's good, right? <laughs> I think Chris Kleiman and Courtney Messingham would take that all season long. Another Peterson Farm Seed kickoff. Kick off your planning season with Peterson Farm Seed. Mortensen has been a busy guy on special teams returning. It's taken down at the 20 yard line. Boy, special teams coverage has been really good today for North Dakota State. Hey, Victor, Victor Kachewski Kachewski in, in there. there. Yep, 31. Victor listed as a wide out. Sophomore from Stevens Point, Wisconsin. He was one of those guys, too, that was forced to play running back 
in a mop-up duty sort of role last year because the Bison were so short there. That was a pretty short scoring recap. One play, 81 yards, by 86 yards in 35 seconds. New quarterback. Neil Jenkins out. Jake Jeffrey in. He's the kid who uh, who came in and played and filled out the rest of the year pretty much after Jenkins got injured last year. Yeah, did start six games. A couple of touchdown passes, 53 out of 108 throwing. Did some good things. At five picks, his, his passing percentage is, is much lower. They both quarterbacks were under 50% last year. A pretty good move out that time by Juwan Campbell, but good luck Weiser. trying to get around him. Yeah. Jabril Cox, James Hendricks closing in in a hurry. That's where Jabril Cox is absolutely at his best. He tackles in space as well as anyone in the country. Well, Matt Ent said we have worked with Jabril and he's taken some steps forward. He can play both outside linebacker spots. We're going to be able to have some fun with number 42 this season. Jeffrey fires, and it's complete. First down for Cal Poly, Trey Green making the reception and getting up to the 48-yard line. Grimsley making another tackle. He's been so involved in the run game, Nodak Insurance Company replay. See where Grimsley goes, he floats in, he's thinking quarterback run. Nope, here comes the pass. He's got to get back, try to make the tackle. Make them adjust from there. Nice job by Jeffrey, though. Hung in there. Took a pretty good shot from Marlette at the end of that play. Pro throw. And gets what he can. Well, he is wrestled down from behind by Aaron Steitel. Gain of three. And pro throw really is an interesting guy. He did not realize this until I looked into it, but he led all of California in 2012 in rushing yards. 3,000. 31 yards in a single season with 34 touchdowns. Has a wife, Ashley, three daughters under the age of three. He's from Concord, California. Yeah. Boy, he's busy. Pitch outside. We have not seen Cal Poly outside much. That ball loose as Campbell lost it. I think somebody from Cal Poly jumped on top of it to hang on to the possession. Oh, throw throw. throw. Bison do a great job on the Nodak Insurance Company replay of stringing this one out. There's no way to go. He tries to filter his way back to the middle of the field. Ball gets slapped away and both throws right there to keep the possession. Go down as a loss of one and third and eight coming up. I mean, we've seen it's been tough to try to run the ball up the middle. But also, with the speed of this NDSU defense, it's almost impossible to get outside as well. Pressure coming. Jeffrey goes down. And welcome back, Greg Menard. That guy's been waiting a long time for that moment. For the 25th time in his Bison career, he is able to put a quarterback to the turf. Top 10 all time already. Greg Menard, look at that big smile. <laughs> He's done a lot of work to get back. And, and you know, we talked with Matt Entz. You, are we going to see anything different? They're like, nope, Greg <laughs> is looks Greg. Good to us. Yep. His explosiveness, explosiveness is back. Sublet. Back to take that one, I think, is Trevor Height. Is it not? Number 84? Yep. Number It's 84. You're right, that is Trevor, sophomore. Out of Pepin, Wisconsin, 5'9", 178. Another guy that had a significant injury early last season. Well, whether you're buying, building, or refinancing, Gate City Bank home loans are locally approved, financed, and serviced. Gate City Bank, for a better way of life, member FDIC, equal housing lender. Just got a text from Jamar Kane, former defensive ends coach here at NDSU. He's watching out in Fresno, where he's now a coach. 
Said he's back. <laughs> Talking about Greg Menard. <laughs> Phoenix Sproles, the intended target, overshot that time a little bit by Easton Stick. Shanti Riza in on the coverage. Now that ball just a little too tall for Sproles. But here's a young man in his true freshman season that NDSU is, is thinking big things for him. I know. Uh, Coach Hedberg, when I was talking with him, he said, mark it down. By the midpoint of the season, he's going to be good. Meaning he's not one of those freshmen that's going to play four games in a red shirt. No. He's going to play. Ty Brooks in that tailback. Turned back after a gain of one. And one thing that is actually going to help Sproles is that now that the Bison are into game mode, you know, you get so much thrown at you in playbook wise in the in fall camp that you're trying to learn it all. Well, now you don't have to learn it all. You just have to know what you're going to run this week. So that will actually help him um, go back to, to learning it a little bit easier and having the game try to again slow down for him. Three receivers to the near side of your screen here on third and long. Stick down the middle. Freeman is open. Caught it initially and then lost the football, and I think it's going to go incomplete. Big hit there at the 50 on number 83. Two different Mustangs converging. Pretty tight window where this ball's coming right at you off the hand of Easton Stick. Hits that window, and then the ball comes dislodged. There's not much Freeman can do about that one. He, he had the ball in a decent position to try to tuck it away, but that hit was just too big. Boy, Kidu Humphrey coming over and laying the wood. We'll bring up a punting situation here. Wegner has not been very busy today, just his second punt. But his first one was good, real good. This one not as good, but he might get a friendly hop. He did not. Lynn Bush will touch it and down it at the 34. And that's where Cal Poly will have it when we come back. 6.06 to go. Here in quarter number three, Bison lead 42-3 on the Egg Country Farm Credit Services scoreboard. Well, Dan Marlette, his first game back since tearing an ACL, has played tremendous. Nine tackles, eight solo, two for loss. Been all over the field, whether it's the quarterback or the fullback. He's been involved. Roll throw again up the middle. Pyle pushing ahead to the 41 yard line, game of six. I think Jackson Hinkey is in there right now, so Marlette's taking a little bit breather and some quarterback or some linebacker reps from Hankey, the redshirt freshman from Park River. Also, two new safeties in right now with Wimbush and Michael Tutsi, a redshirt freshman out of Indianapolis. Who Matt Entz is very excited about his potential and his future. Josh Hayes also in that corner, made that tackle. Let's go down to Ryan Gellner for a First International Bank and Trust sideline report, Ryan. Guys, two series ago, Khalil Jenkins, the quarterback for Cal Poly, limped off the football field after Greg Menard sacked him. Jenkins immediately went to the trainer's table, which is where he's at now. They immediately put ice on his left egg, leg. It is wrapped up. They also brought out a knee immobilizer to add to that. Almost every member of the Cal Poly team went over, hugged, Khalil Jenkins, the head coach, came over, gave him a big hug. They embraced for about 30 seconds. It does not look good for Khalil Jenkins. Guys, he had two off-season surgeries to come back to play this year, his senior year, but it does not look good as he sits on that trainer's bench and obviously is out for the remainder of this game. That is just awful news. Now, and here's the play that Ryan's talking about. Menard is going to hit him on... Just drives that left knee, looks like it got uh, driven into the turf on the tackle. It just got up funny. At some point, there's a twist. Boy, how about that? <laughs> that's, that's the former walk on, Steidel, swimming through and taking down Jawan Campbell for a loss of two. That really is too bad uh, for Jenkins if that knee is as bad as it looks. For as much as he did, to come back and play and to be able to come for his senior year. Those two surgeries that uh, Ryan talked about. It's a guy that 
claims he could he could have played college basketball. Tim Walsh actually backed that up this week in an interview, saying he he could probably play for Cal Poly on our basketball team. That's how good of an athlete he was. Had a lot of college interest, heavy recruiting interest in the Big Sky. Even some FBS schools went to Cal Poly for the academics. Jeffrey overshoots his target that time. Juwan Campbell, Jackson Brown in on that coverage. Another young man that is working into a new position, moving down from safety to outside linebacker. Said it's been a pretty smooth transition, according to Matt Entz, defensive coordinator. Yeah, so far in the last two years, he got banged up early in terms of trying to get some regular reps in the defense, but he's been a big special teams guy. They're trying to find a place defensively where Brown can make an impact on the team on the field that's not special teams and they're hoping that that outside linebacker position is one that he'll transition into and make that impact. Sublet the punt, Grimsley the fair catch at the 12 yard line. That's where North Dakota State will take over, leading by 39. guessing we wouldn't see stick and he's not in there so here comes the college debut of Holden Hotchkiss a redshirt freshman out of Florida taking his first collegiate snap won the backup quarterback competition in fall camp landed off to Brooks boy that guy is slippery finally taken down after a loss of seven or a gain of seven excuse me if you remember back in spring when when the two guys were battling uh, Sanders and Hodgkiss it was real even and no one really um, I guess took too big of an edge at that time. Well this summer coach Hedberg uh, was telling me that that's kind of where Hodgkiss maybe separated himself because he didn't have a job. He came in and he, and he lifted with coach Kramer and the biggest thing he did is he video studied every day and on Saturdays with Easton Stick. Much the same way that Carson Wentz helped Stick, Stick's trying to help everybody else, and in this case, he was uh, his helping Hodgkins, and he simply learned the offense. Caught a glimpse there of Noah Sanders, who was also in the quarterback race. Sanders and Hodgkins are actually roommates, roommates very yeah. supportive of one another. They knew it was going to be a heated competition. There's a look at Sanders, number 16, who had a tremendous prep career at Apple Valley High School in the Twin Cities. Had a scholarship offer to Montana State, decided to walk on at NDSU instead. But one thing you always have to do is stay ready. You never know if your number's going to be called. Certainly, Easton Stick found that out his redshirt freshman year. Hotchkiss keeps it, falls to the ground. There were two different Mustangs back there. Nick Navarro, one of them. Jason Lee, the other. If you want to look at the quarterback situation that NDSU has right now, it's really similar to 2014. The only real difference in, in, the, in the scenario is this is Sticks senior year and that was the Wentz's junior year but you know Wentz had you know Davis and McGinnis behind him and some young kid called Easton Stick who was a true freshman learning and he became the next big thing the Bison have it kind of now Stick the senior Hodgkiss and Sanders and then they have the freshman who they think Trey Lance who has a chance to be the next big thing Hodgkiss on target pass caught by Adam Cofield Cofield, another running back. Played a lot of special teams. Did have 40 carries a year ago before he had some knee issues and was sidelined for the rest of the season. You know that insurance company replay. Just out in the flat, seeing if he can make a, ma a man miss. First man does. Second man brings him down. It'll be third down. Cofield, a sophomore from Lee Summit, Missouri. Missouri's been a very good state to North Dakota State when it comes to recruiting. Jabril Cox, certainly Darius Shepard. And Adam Cofield, another one. Hotchkiss, time, not running out of time. Now he's going to take off and run with it. To the 35, pushed out of bounds by Jason Lee. Pretty tough running there for number 15. He's got a first down. Hodgkiss puts the shoulder down, and I don't think Lee quite expected that, but Hodgkiss needs to do this at the end to try to pick up the first down. Hotchkiss not the biggest guy, 196 pounds, but he wanted to finish that run, and he did. Moves the chains with 40 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Only 
young man to talk to as well. Very personable. Josh Babich, Noah Gindorf playing some tight end right now. Brooks trying to move that outside, but unable to do so. Jojo Falo, a true freshman starting for Cal Poly, makes the tackle. Played in the 2017 Polynesian Bowl in Honolulu, a three-star recruit. Went to prep school at Air Force last year. And that will take us to the end of the third quarter here at the Fargo Dome. 42-3, North Dakota State leads. We're back with your final 15 from the Fargo Dome after this timeout on the KBOI KFYR Live Television Network. To look at some of the highlights from today and the bison running wild lance done three touchdown runs bruce anderson a couple of touchdown runs easton stick has a touchdown run and north dakota state 340 rushing yards today Ooh, that was a dangerous pass from holden hotchkiss phoenix rolls the intended target that was almost, yeah, almost a pick six there for reason uh, he read the route jumped it but just the ball slipped between his hands so third and 11 coming up Andy Boyan now in a wide receiver, another walk on. Made the two deep. He did. For this opening week. Yep. Two deep, uh, wide out behind Dallas Freeman. So Babbage will get split out to the left. Babbage is a tall young man, a tight end they're really excited about. Played high school volleyball in Illinois. Really good ball skills. Hotchkiss. Out to Phoenix Sproles, incomplete. Short hopped him just a little bit. Will bring up a punting situation for Garrett Wegner. I did notice Nash Jensen was in playing some offensive line on that particular possession. Um, also, like Bolson and Bacon continued to be in there, but at different positions. Here's your North Dakota Soybean Council. Fun fact, did you know soy is a great source of protein containing all essential amino acids and cholesterol free, making it heart healthy. Brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Council. Nice high punt. Wegner, a dangerous fair catch taken that time by Campbell at the 24, and now a flag comes in. I'm assuming you already knew that because tofu is one of your favorite foods, isn't it? I will plead the fifth on that one. <laughs> Why? <laughs> I'm trying to back you into a corner. <laughs> Chris Klein is going to want here is no unnecessary penalties, no silliness. Just get out of here clean and enjoy the week off before getting ready for North Alabama coming in here on September 15th. The North Alabama a transitioning Division II program based in Florence, which was the home no of the Division II National Championship for several years. First down for Cal Poly. Picking up the flag, so Cal Poly will start. At its own 25. It is very odd that the second week of the season ends up being your bye week. It's nothing that Coach Kleiman is jumping, uh, you know, not real excited over joy about it. But there's not much they can do about it because then once that North Alabama game starts, here comes the gauntlet. It's what ten weeks in a row, isn't it? For Cal Poly, it doesn't get any easier. They have to return home and take on the defending Big Sky champs Weber State next Saturday night. Campbell taken down. Boy, the Bison really good in run pursuit. Saw Jackson Brown get out there, get in on that tackle. Hanky was there as well. Those two linebackers. Brown turns it back in. Hanky with his with the flow coming out to make the tackle. Nodak Insurance Company replay. Your pitch. Now watch number three. Help turn the play in and make the tackle. Then there's Hanky as well. Open receiver is Campbell. Well thrown football that time by Jake Jeffrey and a first down inside Bison territory to the 47. We talked earlier on a kickoff return how Campbell's the fastest man on the team and he got a little bit of an ISO here on a linebacker beats the speed Wimbush is the safety playing uh, you know deep obviously he's not the primary cover man can't beat the throw to the ball. Hankey making that hit and tackle on Jeffrey after a game of about five. 
you know, Hanky's an interesting guy. Coming in from a small, small school, Matt Entz wasn't exactly sure what they were getting. He did not really come in his football shape. He played baseball the summer before he got to campus, and they didn't really know what they had until he got in football shape in about November. Then they started getting really excited about him. Matt Entz and I, we, we were pleasantly impressed how smart he is on the field, really picked up everything we're doing. Yeah, he's been a little bit banged up throughout fall camp. Adjusting to the speed of the game, that is one of the main things that, uh, that Coach Entz said that, to us anyway, that Jackson still is, is working on. That, that's, and there's only one way to do that, and that's get out there and play. Both parents graduated from NDSU. His brother Abraham goes to school to NDSU. Another pitch outside, but there's nowhere to go for Campbell. Another tackle for loss for North Dakota State. Logan McCormick played as a true freshman last year out of Appleton, Wisconsin. Put on a few pounds, getting an opportunity here along with Spencer Wagey. Two guys I know North Dakota State's really excited about the future of those two guys. It was a battle between those two to see who was going to have their red shirt pulled last year between McCormick and Wagey. And as you mentioned, Logan played. I do want to say on that last play, Jackson Brown did a great job of not getting cut and making sure that that play continued to get cut up inside. He didn't give up the out. Sublet. A nice job punting today. Nice high tight spiral. Takes a bounce at the seven. And rolls dead at the one yard line. That's about as good as you can do it. So North Dakota State backed up. Leading 42 to 3. 12 10 to go here in Fargo. Show your buys and pride today with an NDSU Gate City Bank ATM and check card. Visit GateCityBank.com slash MyCard. Gate City Bank for a better way of life. Member FDIC. Holden Hodgkiss back out for his second series. Bison continuing to rotate. Offensive lineman. We talked about Nash Jensen. Now, Nash came in, he is a big guy, very big. I mean, he, he came in at 350 plus pounds. He has actually dropped weight, about 22 pounds to get down to 328. Coach is very excited about his future. Did not lift a lot of weights in high school, they said. And now all of a sudden he's picked it up, really turned his body around. And Chris Kleiman, I remember on signing day, said we have the road grader. <laughs> yep, Nash, Nash Jensen. Yeah, he's number 66 playing right guard. Zach Kubis is also in. Playing left guard, uh, Carson Schooning is in at center, I believe, 59. Brooks, they have lost the football there for a minute. I think it's still loose, and Cal Poly claiming they have it. Yeah. I, I saw a beanbag come flying in there. And when the official throws that, then that means he sees the ball come out. And recovering that fumble was Matt Shotwell. The loss of possession recovered by the defense. And First Shotwell down. comes from the football Hall. family. His brother Kyle played at Cal Poly and won the Buck Buchanan Award back in 2006. What's interesting about that is Kyle was the third straight Cal Poly player to win the Buck Buchanan Award. Another new quarterback in, Connor Bruce, redshirt freshman out of Bakersfield, California. Quinn Allo, I see in there playing some nose. Allo from nearby Lemoore, North Dakota. Trey Green in motion. Hanky makes the stop on the option. Gain of a couple. That is Kyle Reed in that quarterback, not Connor Bruce. Reed is another redshirt freshman out of Los Gatos, California. So Reed picking up a couple of yards. Oh, and he is <laughs> smacked by Spencer Wagey. Holy smokes. Uh, Spencer, we talked about redshirting. He's from South Shore, South Dakota. I asked about the number change. 
to 99. He goes, it's always been my favorite number. I said, did you wear that in high school? He said, no, because I was an offensive lineman. I had to wear <laughs> they 70. They wouldn't let him. Pressure dumped out to Campbell, incomplete. A lot of pressure. There were two big bodies right on top of Reed. He had really not much time to try to put that pass out with any touch on it. Looks like Cal Poly will keep the offense out on fourth and goal at the eight. Allo was one of them. And let's see if we can see who the other was. Check out 97 right up the gut, the nose tackle. Malcolm Davis is the tailback. Green in motion. Oh, pressure again, and down he goes. Getting in there was Logan McCormick for the sack, and the Bison hold. Boy, does Logan McCormick just eat up the offensive lineman. He gets his hands right through to the heart, the chest of that offensive lineman and beats him bad. Check it out, right there on the left side of your screen. Boy, when you can get into the meat of the offensive lineman that quick with your hands and have the foot speed that we know McCormick has. Hanky and Wagey there to help. And North Dakota State has the football back under 10 minutes to go. Pretty good hole that time to run through for Adam Cofield. Across the 20 up to the 21 yard line. Number 18, Adam Cofield, Walker. This game brought to you in high definition on the KVLI KFYR Bison Television Network, including the affiliates KUMV, KQCD, KMOT, KFYR, and KVLY in the Valley. Cofield has a first down up to the 25. Decent push. Cofield is trying to stay as patient, but also knowing he needs to pick up the, the three for the first. With Act Insurance Company replay. He's able to break that one in. I don't know if you call it break it, but slip through that first tackle or that first tackler enough to pick up the first down. As you mentioned on the broadcast, Seth Wilson not available today. Going to hold him out a couple of weeks. That bye back. will help him. Holfield stopped in his tracks that time and taken down immediately on the play by Shotwell. Loss of one. coming out of Philadelphia today that Carson Wentz will not start week one. It will be Nick Foles as Carson continues to rehab and come back from a knee injury. It's Brock Robbins again with a carry. Second carry today for Big Brock and he picks up six and he's still moving the pile <laughs> all the way to the 34 yard line. Ends up being a gain of eight or nine yards. You better change that with your picks up six. Picks up six and then moves about three more. Boy, you talk about when he was in high school, obviously, you know, the, the good size and the speed he had, plus the wide open field that he had. So, some of his highlights, you see this big guy just blowing past every, everybody. Obviously, left man football, you don't have as much room, but, but he was huge in high school. He had just a tremendous career. It's another wrinkle that North Dakota State can throw in now that teams have to get ready for is that dive play to Robbins. Nice move to the outside by Cofield, almost kept his feet. Still a nice pickup and another first down up to the 49 yard line. Riza makes the tackle. It's nice to see these moves out of Cofield, considering what Looks he good. had to do to come back and, and get ready to play. Here it is again on your Nodak Insurance Company replay. Cofield. Josh Howison, nice seal block there on the edge to open up that hole. Now 
Ty Brooks back into the game, and Brooks continues to keep the feed moving across midfield, all the way down to the 42. Going to be very close to another first down, about a yard short. Ty really likes to bounce if he can. If he, he'll see the initial, if it's not there, boom, he's going to the outside because he knows that's where his extra advantage is, and then it's just flat out speed. If he can get that corner turned after the bounce and head upfield, he always has a chance to break it. Jojo Follow found that at first hand, thought he had a shot at him, all of a sudden 28 was about three yards away. Brooks again. Has some blocks downfield. Ty Brooks to the 30. Brooks to the 15 and finally taken down at about the 12 yard line. Getting up a little bit slowly. Kevin Howell makes the stop for Cal Poly. Ty looks to be okay. He's going to come off. I, I wonder if he's landed on the football. Did you see that bounce? There's, you, there's the speed we're talking about. And then the ball is up underneath it. Sometimes that can help to knock the wind out. Dakota State marching this drive again. Started back at their own three-yard line. 30 yards on that game for Brooks. North Dakota State now over 400 rushing yards right on the day. And I think you're right. Missed a man cutting across the middle that time. Hotchkiss throwing it out of bounds. Yeah, he had one of the tight ends open over the middle. Boyan the intended target. Yeah, he went to Boyan in the end zone. But which 80 number it was, I wasn't sure, but I know I saw it was one of the tight ends. It was, it was pretty open. Easton Sticks numbers, not huge throwing the football today, just four of nine, 48 yards, but he really didn't need to throw the football. It him so much success on the ground. Hodgkiss has his first career touchdown at North Dakota State. IQ Humphrey misses. Number eight comes up, misses. Hodgkiss is able to play off that miss and take it in for the touchdown. And I guess the way the running has been going today, Brian, it's appropriate that it was another running touchdown. That's the point. Booted through. And Jake Reinholds getting his opportunity to kick. Richard freshman out of Fargo Shanley High School. Holden Hodgkiss. Darks in from 12 yards. His first career touchdown at North Dakota State. And the Bison lead it 49 to 3. He's excited. <laughs> Should be. We'll be back with more from the Fargo Dome after this. Fine building or refinancing. Start with a Gate City Bank Blue Standard pre approval and experience a better home loan. Get started today at GateCityBank.com for a better way of life. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. You mentioned Reinholtz, he's in his red shirt freshman year. Kicker. He's gonna get an opportunity to kick off your strong leg. Another Peterson Farm seed kickoff taken by Campbell. At the two, and he's taken down. One area North Dakota State spent a lot of time on in the fall camp and even in the spring was coverage, kickoff and punt. Not as good as Chris Kleiman was hoping it would be. Wanted to develop some guys that could really excel on special teams. And so far today, it's been really, really good. back out for his second series. Gonna put it in the air, and it's complete. Caught by Quentin Harrison, a 6'2 sophomore. Pretty good timing there between your quarterback and receiver on the deep out. About a 14-yard pattern. 
And he comes back about another two yards, makes the catch. Five hand off inside, gain of four for Trey Nyhaas, who's the backup fullback. Tours ACL in 2015, has come back. Really sharp young man. Biomedical engineer. Dean's list. I don't even want to know what a biomedical engineer does. I wouldn't understand it if he told me. <laughs> That is certainly a major consideration when you're at Cal Poly and you're recruiting kids. They have to be able to get into school and stay there. Josh Hayes coming up to make the initial stop on that pitch. First carry of the day for Brandon Davis, another redshirt freshman tailback. Josh Hayes, of course, in the playoffs last year, when they, they meaning the Bison, needed somebody to step in and fill a role, he did that nicely as a freshman. He played 15 games as a true freshman. Three pass breakups, had a really tough assignment, had to guard Riley Stapleton of James Madison. Yeah, good luck with that. Battled hard. Mayas stumbled a little bit. Tackled by Jackson Brown. We talked about Jackson Brown making his move to uh, to linebacker. Just some of the things fundamentally from a safety position to a linebacker position. You, you obviously have to be quicker because you, you don't have as much time to react. At safety, Coach Klanerman says your job is to clean up everyone else's mess. At linebacker, your job is to try to get in there and be, create the mess or be, maybe be part of it. Chaos again. Dives ahead for one, maybe two. Jackson's put on some weight. Not a ton of weight, just 209 pounds, but about 12 pounds heavier than a year ago. And see, he's in his junior year from Eau Claire. Father actually played football back in 1989 at Oklahoma and Minnesota. Oh, fumble. On Ball's field. on the ground, and I think the Bison got it. Two green jerseys at the bottom of that pile. Not sure which one wrestled it away. I think it's 93. Logan McCormick is who you're going to see on top of that football. Yes, it is. Wade, you'll let him have it. <laughs> <laughs> Nodak Insurance Company replay. There's the exchange. And the quarterback's hand pulls it a little bit out. Then McCormick sees that ball, jumps on top of it. Says Spencer. I like you and all, but I'm going to keep this thing. Good day for McCormick. Couple of tackles, a sack, a fumble recovery. The defensive end group today has has been as dynamic as you thought they would be. They have played well. Cofield breaking one off to the outside around the safety and tried to turn the corner before he is pushed out of bounds. Dominic Frosch, I believe, is the guy who, number nine, playing some safety. Yep. He was the guy that maybe saved a touchdown. I don't quite know if he was able to, to get the, you know, he got the corner, but I don't know if he'd be able to, to beat the, the angle. Bradley Mickey also in at defensive back. Cofield having a nice day. You like the, from the Bison standpoint, you really like to see the production though of this quote unquote second unit. It's been pretty good. Cofield tiptoes through the hole, bounces off a of one tackler before he is dropped by Frosch after a gain of one. Costner Ching getting some uh, reps at fullback. He's a redshirt freshman from Castlewood, South Dakota. Listed as a tight end, but depending on who you are and what your athletic abilities are, you are both in this offense. Tight end and fullback. And some valuable reps here for some of the backups. Sproles will continue to put in some work. Boyan still out there, certainly Hotchkiss. Ty Brooks. 
Still moving the pile forward to about the 22-yard line before he is swallowed up. You see Cody Mauk helping him up off the turf. Cody playing, he's number 70, a redshirt freshman from Hankinson. Cody Mauk made some significant gains in the weight department. I mean, oh, isn't that crazy? How I mean, he much came in at 230 pounds. I think he's put out about 40. Oh, Close to, to it. See what do they list him at now? 269, so he's 270. Yeah, so that's 39 pounds from when he came in as a freshman in a year. Josh Howison playing in a tackle, I believe now. Cofield again. Was tackled that time in the hole by Navarro. Ben Hecht also playing along the offensive line. Well, everything I thought we'd see today, we did. North Dakota State does not have to snap the ball again. I would guess they will not, and time will run out here in the fourth quarter. The Bison run wild. 456 rushing yards today. 510 total. And North Dakota State will move to 1-0 with a 49-3 victory over Cal Poly. This copyrighted broadcast is property of North Dakota State University. Any rebroadcast, reproduction, or distribution without consent of NDSU is strictly prohibited. Chris Kleiman and Tim Walsh embrace at midfield. The two teams will shake hands, wish each other luck, and move on. And we certainly wish the best for Khalil Jenkins, Cal Poly's quarterback, who was put into a significant brace. Had some ice on a knee, and best case scenario, at least it's not ACL related. It's something where he can at least come back at some point this season. Yeah, you, you hope so, but what leads me to believe that it may not be was the reaction of his teammates and coaches. Yeah. Again, for Cal Poly, five of their first six opponents are ranked in the top, top 25. Going to be tough. NDSU will not have to go anywhere. They will get next Saturday off. Then get ready for North Alabama. Then Delaware comes in on the 22nd of September before the Valley opener with South Dakota State in the Dakota Marker game. Another home game. Now the Bison will get to know this place very, very well uh, with seven home games this year. Really the unique part about that, LT, is just three flight trips, two in October, one in November. That's it. Then the drive to Vermillion for a road game at the Dakota Dome coming up in October. To, yep, and a fly to Springfield. Ryan Gellner is standing by with Chris Kleiman. Pretty good effort for uh, your team today, Chris. Uh, over 458 rushing yards, 500 yards on offense. It's a pretty good day's work. Yeah, it really was. It was a total team win. I thought offensively we came out and controlled the line of scrimmage. Defensively, take a really good offense and hold them to three points. And I thought our special teams did a nice job. So. Overall, really pleased for the first game. Yeah, defensively to hold these guys to 200 total yards, uh, that's pretty good as well. Yeah, that's a good that's a good team, and they're going to win a lot of games. Uh, our guys were just really focused and play well today. On a side note, I thought you'd be excited. Chris Board made a 53-man roster today. Surprise me! If you can play special teams and you can run and hit like CB can, you got a, you got a job in this league. All right, Stitch was right. Thank you so much, guys. Back upstairs to you. All right, thanks so much, Ryan. Appreciate it. Special teams, want to make a name for yourself. It's a good place to do it. North Dakota State and its players will celebrate the victory. Move to 1-0. And look ahead to two weeks when North Alabama comes in. We'll step aside, take a break, and be back with more from here at the Fargo Dome. How about that effort on the ground today? 458 rushing yards. Only 82 rushing yards allowed to Cal Poly. And the to get off on the right foot here in 2018. Back in a moment. Welcome back to the Fargo Dome. Brian Sean Lee Timmerman with you. North Dakota State victorious 49 to three in the season opener here at the Fargo Dome. And LT can't say enough good about what happened on the field for the Bison today. But one thing in particular was the strong ground game. We've seen North Dakota State blow up before, but this one was even beyond what we've seen. Uh, the physical nature of NDSU's offensive line, I think we talked about it in the first quarter. That's usually something that you d don't start to see until you get into that third quarter, maybe into the fourth quarter of the Bison where teams down. Uh, you could just tell. You could tell it right off the bat. 
You could see it in uh, Lance Dunn's touchdowns on how free he was and how much space he had, and that's all a credit to the offensive line and the tight end group and the fullbacks. They gave those running backs some wide open holes, which are e fairly easy to run through. Let's take a look at your stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. And, well, I mean, that's that really does about. tell the story. I mean, the time of possession, ironically enough, did go to Cal Poly for as much as they ran the football. But when you look at the production, uh, that's everything points in favor of North Dakota State. Yeah, 45 rushes at over 10 yards, 10 point something uh, per carry. <laughs> You're going to win every game you ever play <laughs> for the rest of football's history if you can do that. Yeah, that's the, <laughs> absolutely the truth. And North Dakota State three and out on the first possession. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, they kind of got things rolling. A Bruce Anderson 22-yard run, and then Lance Dunn was the guy that took it to the house. And it was good to see Lance get back in the end zone after missing a good chunk of 2017. Yeah, he was able to get in the, into the end zone early a bunch. And then, of course, uh, we had that big 86-yard uh, touchdown run as well in this one. So, yeah, big plays on the ground. Did we think we were going to see them? Yes. Did we? Yes. Well, stats brought to you by the North Dakota Certified Seed Producers. Let's take a look at some of those offensive highlights, and we just mentioned it a moment ago. It, it, w it was really the Lance Dunn Show. We'll take a look at those highlights after the break, and uh, be back with more from here at the Fargo Dome after this. Back here at the Fargo Dome. Our post-game show continues on the KBLY, KFYR, Bison Television Network. Brian Sean Peterson with uh, with you once again at LT. We talked about the ground game before we went to break. We'll take a look at some of those highlights on the offensive side of the ball. There were a lot of strong run plays. You mentioned 10 yards on average. And Lance Dunn got things rolling with his 35-yard scamper. Yeah, here's video evidence of what we were talking about. Lance, how about this for a day? Your touchdown percentage was 50%. <laughs> he carried the ball six times today, three of them end up in the end zone here's his shortest one the second touchdown of the day yeah, it looked like the same old Lance and again this is a guy that had 12 touchdowns in the first six games last season watch this cut boom that's Bruce Anderson also getting into the act Bruce had a pretty good day as well only averaged 17 yards a carry 11 attempts 185 for two TDs that was his first and these two have been the dynamic duo you know they're going to be again. There's the third touchdown of the day from Dunn. Ended up with, uh, what did Lance have, uh, 65 yards? 35 of them on that one touchdown. Easton Stick couldn't help but take that when he saw that green in front of him. Pretty easy for him. Stick did not throw the ball a lot today. Didn't have to. Did have 40 rushing yards. And this was the backbreaker for Anderson. Ripped it off an 86-yarder and ran away from everybody. That massive hole right up the middle. He squirts free. When you have to beat the free safety one-on-one, -on -one, you're loving it every single time, and that's what he did. And here's the last. Oh, this is Hotchkiss. Yeah, Hotchkiss came out. Was a little more, probably more effective running the ball than he was throwing it, but was able to pick up his first collegiate touchdown. And that ended the scoring as the Bison put 49 points on the scoreboard today. We will step aside one more time, be back and look at some of the defensive highlights, and there were a lot of those to show as well. I'll okay, with us. 48. He probably will be. <laughs> Welcome back to the Fargo Dome. North Dakota State celebrating a fan base celebrating 49th victory here in the season opener this afternoon. Brian Sean Lee Timmerman, Ryan Gellner will join us momentarily. Let's take a look at some of the defensive highlights that we had today, and there are quite a few of those as well. A lot of guys played well in the defensive line and in the secondary. Uh, the yeah, it, it's, again, the, the uh, defensive line was so much more physical, and I think we saw the speed, just the real speed. Here's Stanley Jones getting in there. The defensive end showed terrific speed, and then Dan Marlette was just all over the place. Here's Jordheim coming in, getting a hit on the, uh, on the quarterback. But this... Uh, this is an offense that just did not have an opportunity to do anything with any sort of timing. There's Stanley Jones in there uh, making a tackle. The uh, negative rushing plays on, uh, on Jenkins before he went out, he, he did, his rushing numbers are not good because he was going down a lot on the back, uh, back behind the line of scrimmage. Well, you had mentioned Marlette. He is standing by with Ryan Gellner. Yeah, guys, Dan Marlette, as you said, had a heck of a football game today. Nine tackles to lead the Bison. You hold this group that uh, came out with a, a pretty good rushing plan to just 125 yards rushing. 
defensively a real good effort for you guys. Uh, yeah, I mean, it clicked for us, and I think the biggest thing is the scout scout team this this week uh, was able to show us a great look with the triple option, uh, which isn't easy. And and when you can have a speed that our scout team did it at, and you come to the game and it's, it, it's similar, makes things so much easier for us. Joe Prothero, their running back, uh, who is uh, one of the best in the FCS, he's a load and all over the place on the field, but you guys were able to handle him. Seemed like you could get one hat to him, and then all of a sudden everybody else was there. Talk about stopping him in particular. Uh, yeah, we talked about it all week. He was six foot 230. He was a load, and um, we knew if you can get a hat on there, and with the pursuit that we practice every practice, uh, you know, eventually would take him down. And, you know, it, it, some guys were relied on to uh, make a couple open field tackles, and it happened, and uh, overall it, it just went well. Personally, you told me that the, the knee feels good, and anytime that knee feels good, you're happy about it. Anytime I don't have to worry about it at all, I'm happy about it. And, uh, you know, throughout practice, throughout fall camp, it was feeling great, and just the fact that I come out here and not have to worry about it at all is, it just makes it easier for me. Did you think about it at all? Was there a play or a cut that you made where afterwards you went, wait, wait a second, that, that turned out okay? Yeah, I, number five, the, the running back, I, you know, stole some of my kneecaps, one of the plays, and I got up and I was like, well, this, this is fine. I feel great. So, Gu Guys, that is Dan Marlette. We'll send it back upstairs to you. Thanks, Dan. Thank you very much. <laughs> Stole some of my kneecaps. <laughs> awesome way to describe he got blocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good to see the senior out with an opportunity to make some yeah. plays here in his senior season after having his junior season cut short. And he, he's making the most of it, certainly did today. I, I thought his freedom of movement uh, after he made his initial read, you can tell he's spot on. I, I remember Coach Kleiman saying that he was he was playing at an all-conference level last year before he got injured. Well, we just saw that, that same type of uh, performance out on the field again today. You have to think from here between he and Levi Jordheim, two guys playing at an extremely high level at this point. Bruce Anderson is the NODAC Insurance Company player of the game and he is also standing by with Ryan Gellner. Yeah guys 11 carries 185 yards one uh, big one that you took to the house had to feel good today. Oh yeah it felt man it just felt good back uh, stepping on this field with all the fans and all my brothers so it just felt real good to play again. 458 rushing yards for this Bison football team. We know you guys can run the football but 458 to come out like that uh, not only did Bruce Anderson played well everybody played well. It's a, it's a team game, you know, like it started with the line up front. Lance was balling early, you know, so I had to raise my level of play. And it is uh, like, it's like good competition with us. So he does well, we all do well, and it's a sense of the play. And we just, like you said, 454, you know, just everybody was running well, and we just attacked the process. And that offensive line, you can't say enough about those guys. They were blowing people up today. Man, it was like a car wreck over there on the line. The, the Rams got it done. They was really displacing it, and it's made it easy for me and Lance. Bruce Anderson, the NODAC Insurance Player of the Game, congratulations, and uh, take a week off, and then good luck the rest of the way. Thank you, thank you. Fellas? All right, thanks, Ryan. That was a lot of fun <laughs> listening to Bruce. It was like a car wreck in <laughs> front of me. <laughs> they didn't get into his <laughs> kneecaps. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Bruce, I think, really putting the cherry on top of that victory with the 86-yard touchdown run in the second half. And uh, good to see Bruce playing at that kind of level as well, a guy that Matt Entz even told us. Back in the spring, he may be the best player on the team right now just in terms of all the things he can bring to the table. Yeah, he said if you were going to give give him me, meaning linebacker, linebacker group, that he would be, that he, meaning Anderson, would be on the field as a linebacker. <laughs> He's that talented. Let's take a look at some other scores from around the Missouri Valley. And uh, some games have taken place. There are some still to take place. And uh, some big games, including Montana and Iowa, Northern Iowa coming up, Butler, that surprise, is a huge shocker. Surprise, surprise. Butler got within one late in the game, went for two, did not get it, recovered an onside kick, and then kicked a field goal to win 23-21. And Butler is who North Dakota State plays at Target Field next year, next season. South Dakota, Kansas State, 6 p.m. Northern Iowa, Montana is at 8 p.m. And uh, Illinois State also in action against St. Xavier, 6.30 kickoff coming up tonight. So... Uh, a few games in the Valley. Indiana State played on Thursday. They came out victorious as uh, things are really now in full swing here in college football season. Here we go. <laughs> We're off. We are off and running, aren't we? Well, thanks so much for joining us here on the KVLY KFYR Bison Television Network. Be sure to join us in two weeks when North Alabama comes to the Fargo Dome to take on at number one, North Dakota State. It will be your home for Bison football all season long. For Beth Hool, Alex Egan, Ryan Gellner, and Lee Timmerman, I'm Brian Sean saying so long from the Fargo Dome. We'll see you in two weeks. Have a great day, everybody.